Uh, Welcome, this is episode 328 of the Clive Barker podcast. It's hard to believe it's been that many already. Um, And and, uh, this episode is Halloween memories and scary stories. So it's really just kind of a chat. We're going to talk about uh, what Halloween means to us and memories of Halloween and stuff like that. No, no, no pressure or anything and all the devils and yeah yeah um, and we've got some <laughs> awesome guests uh pete atkins who wrote and uh, wrote hellraiser two through four uh we've got uh, barbie wild female cinnabite extraordinary um, yeah yeah <laughs> extraordinary and we've got uh joe mango of little spark films hey eric <laughs> eric gross of, of followers of the pandorics Oh, the box. Howdy. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Ed and Nina uh, of Cenobium. That's Woo! us. <laughs> the fine podcaster and his wife. <laughs> That's right. And I got the Cenobium t-shirt right now that you can oh. get from our Yay! podcast store. I've got <laughs> boo. Oh, the boo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very oh, appropriate. You got swag. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. So... Uh, it's almost it's tonight is devil's night so yeah, uh yeah yeah we uh fires are burning <laughs> <laughs> I thought that uh, was too- oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's the 30th right so well we used for to call it hours, beggar's night. 36 hours <laughs> oh i see we used to call it beggar's night and you would go kind of a pre-trick or treat and see which houses were Gonna generous enough yeah, yeah. Which houses are going to give you the full size candy did, did bars? Did people actually right. like answer yeah. the door and say, "Hey, it's not Halloween till tomorrow"? Or what? What happened there? Yeah, they got it. Like in our neighborhood, they understood what you were doing. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, it's, it's double, it's double thing. night. <laughs> Just, you know, I, I tomorrow, you know. in some places, and Devil's Night somewhere else the night before. But in other states, and certainly like in the UK and Europe. The, yeah, people would say the night before, what the hell are you doing? It's tomorrow. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and Devil's yeah. Night. Yeah, um, I know. The it, night that, after. That, that yeah. wouldn't fly in Washington State or Alaska, I don't think. Yeah. Right. The next do, day. do people still do trick-or-treating? I mean, because I'm a very nervous, worried person, the thought of my, if I did have little kids running around to strangers' houses and getting candy from them, you know, back in the day, yeah. when I were a young one, um, there are all these like things. Oh, somebody's putting razor blades in the chocolate bars and stuff. That's like a that. myth. This, that actually yeah, never, never happened. really happened. That's not really yeah. true. Oh, really? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all urban true. legend. Oh. Yeah. Well, and and I think that more parents go along with their kids now than like when we were young. Yeah. Sure. You know, I, I, mean, I just I mean, ran up, ran off with my friends when I was a kid, but I, you know, I wouldn't want to do let my son do that really. Yeah, Ryan's yeah. one of the only fathers, and Joe, you know, Joe, you have a child. Yeah, yeah. I got two girls. What do you guys do? What do you guys do? What? What do you guys do? Oh, we just take them, we take them to uh, the neighborhoods that have the really big houses. <laughs> yeah. You get the good stuff. Where you yeah. get the full yeah. size candy bars. Full size candy bars. Full size. Yeah. Yeah. High quality Cheap candy. Sunset. Right. Yeah. Giant yeah. size candy bars. <laughs> but those neighborhoods also have the dentists who put the toothpaste in your in your bag too. Uh, uh, one time, one time oh, no. in high school. One time in high school, I remember my buddies would get up and they would go, they would try trick or treat, yet we're all too old, obviously, at the time. And <laughs> no joke, this guy got a, came back with a lava lamp. Wow. <laughs> he, went, he went to a rich neighborhood and he came back wow. with a flipping lava lamp. <laughs> In, in that's our, like that's not halloween that's a door prize in our three <laughs> blocks you know like we had three blocks that we were allowed to do you know and in our three blocks there was like somebody who had a, a job that worked at one of those stores i mean one of those factories where they made cereal and they would give out those little boxes of cereal that you could mm. cut open on the dotted line and pre- oh, and, back and put milk in them and you could eat that, cereal right out of the box, you know? that <laughs> was the best <laughs> and you wanted to pour the milk so it didn't camping. spill <laughs> yeah but we got free ch- little boxes of cereal and one of the um ice cream places near our place would give us a free ice cream cone uh, like a soft serve like a foster soft serve type wow wow always good when the people get into it yeah. some of the parents get into it more than the kids oh yeah yeah well, i definitely- actually passed a house um <clears throat> a couple days ago and i i nearly had a heart attack because these people had had gone to town decorating their house and there was this enormous 
freaking spider on the roof. Awesome. <laughs> and it <was> <laughs> webs. Awesome. It was and it was like, ugh. I mean, I, I I have enormous respect for spiders, and I even have spider pendant and stuff. But um, the, this thing was massive. It was the wow. size of a baby elephant. Like a, a Volkswagen. Just, the size of a Volkswagen. The size of a Volkswagen. <laughs> And I thought, wow, those people really are going to town. Yeah. yeah. Must have yeah a ton. So, Barbie, this you were... Are... This is in London? No, no, no. This is out in the, the country someplace. Uh, oh, <laughs> but, but I mean, but in the That's UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because then that some of my, my yeah. many Halloween jobs, we made a giant spider web out of, like, pink big pieces of PVC pipe and elbows to make a big frame. And then we used like, uh, you know, a heat shrink plastic, you know, like the um, saran wrap type plastic to make a big giant spider web on that. Yeah. Well, we have, but back when I lived in the States, we had these neighbors at the end of the street and they would always go nuts for Halloween and Christmas. They even put a huge star over their house. I mean, it was on this, it was, it was must have been about 15 <laughs> feet in diameter or something. And it was, we would have one little string of lights and <laughs> one little wreath with a candle in it. But my mom actually was well into Halloween considering she was a very, um, you know, religious person. And she would have skeletons in the, she'd throw open the door and you see the skeleton hanging in the awesome. thing. She, she I love it. it. No, she really dug it. She was I was so really into Halloween ever since I was a kid, too, because there was neighbors in my 30 blocks there that some of them would scare the hell out of us. They would, you know, decorate. I mean, not decorate necessarily, but have a monster in their garage where it was all black and dark. And you had to walk past right past their garage to get to the door where the candy was. And they'd jump mm -hmm. out and scare you and stuff. And so from a very early age, I was scared enough in haunted house type environment that I said, oh, I want to do that. I want to make other people scared. So my whole life, I've been like that now. <laughs> Answer the call. <laughs> yeah. I, I so, only wanted to scare people because I, I, no one ever paid any attention to me. So oh. <laughs> I, find I that don't believe that. Believe it, Bobby. <laughs> so it's Barbie. With all your videos and everything. Bye. <laughs> yeah. So Barbie, so you, were, you were born in Canada, right? But you were raised yeah. in the States. So yeah. did you spend a lot of your childhood in Canada? Uh, no, I left okay. when I was six, but, gotcha. um, and it was a good thing too, because they actually had this big company, it was a smelter, and this is scary, <laughs> this is real life scary, it would like vomit, spew all this stuff into the river that we all lived flag. in, and out of this, flag. Oh, no. and, and they, they actually did tests recently, and they found the kids all had very high lead levels in their blood. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was good to escape early. Yeah. Um, so you ended up experiencing Halloween in your childhood in the United States. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And like I said, my mother would take me around and we had these huge pumpkin plastic jack-o'-lantern. They, they were massive. And we'd, you know, yeah. she'd make sure, you know. And then, of course, I'd go and have 13 calories at the dentist a few months later. But <laughs> Oh. No, it was it was wonderful but it was it's much more low-key at least when i moved to the uk it was much more low-key uh, key i think um it's only starting to come around but the brits and the europeans are celebrating halloween you know they think hey this could be fun you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like black friday dollar industry in america yeah. so, sorry say, it's a course, big yeah. billion dollar industry here in america yeah yeah Sure, just speaking just look of at lead poisoning, I actually worked in a, I was a teacher in a native uh, Alaska school and they, they, they ran all of the water for the whole village through the school that had lead pipes. Oh, so all great. of the teachers, we all got uh, distillers. So we had to distill all our water and it took like 12 hours to get a gallon of water. Wow. Um, oh, but well, that actually, always made me worry that when I'd see kids drinking straight out of the drinking fountains. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And well, actually, actually, my first day there, I went to a funeral and there was a dead guy who had stomach cancer from lead poisoning. Oh, my God. And there was no embalming or anything. So he was blue. Oh, Dude. no. Oh. Well, that's a scary Happy story Halloween. right there. Jesus yeah, God. it's not a Halloween <laughs> story, but it was a scary story. Funeral <laughs> yeah. practice. Wow. Reevaluating my life choices. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and Pete. Used to be a teacher. Who else has? Oh, you did? 
who else had crazy Halloween stories? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think I'm on the same boat with Pete because we grew up uh, outside of the U.S. and and uh, you know in in Portugal, um, we don't really celebrate Halloween. Just you know, the last ten years or so, it started to pick up mostly because of the kids. You know, yeah. because the kids want to have some. Th- they always want to do something fun and the schools and, and uh, uh, colleges and stuff. So they started doing that for the kids. And, uh, you know, I've, I've helped my nephew dress up as a little devil with a trident and stuff. And, you know, <laughs> I think but, in America it's adults mostly now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's a good excuse to drink. Any, any excuse is good to drink, but in Portugal, <laughs> our 31st of October is very boring. It's um, it's the time when you go, um meet up with family and then you all go to the to the cemetery and you wash the graves of your family relatives and you put flowers in them and you make it all nice and you make some prayers and then um you have an open air mass um and everybody listens to mass and uh everybody goes home and leaves little light lights candle. burning like isn't, lighted isn't candles that actually isn't that actually november day 1st day. Day day? Day. well that's mexican day of the dead you know Oh, that's right. Because I was actually there in Mexico in Day of the Dead. And that's November and 1st. It was, it was just, the, the, everything was just so the beautiful. And right, right. So that's. But funnily enough, here's, a, you, you remember, I don't know if you guys have seen Spectre, the Bond film with mm-hmm. Daniel Craig. The beginning mm-hmm. of it <clears throat> is in Mexico City and they have this massive parade and everybody's right. dressed with skeletons and stuff like that. <clears throat> that was made up for the film. And at the end of filming, they actually gave all those costumes and everything that was used and the, the paper mache huge skeletons to the city of Mexico so they could have a parade every year because oh, they never cool. used to cool. that, which it's, I thought was really cute, you know. Is that the one where Daniel Craig is walking on the rooftops at the beginning of the movie and it just goes on forever? It, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I lost my <laughs> shit when I saw that. It just no, no. I, I, I often just watch the beginning because it's that the hotel he goes in with that beautiful girl. I've been in that hotel. Oh, and I, just, oh I love it. And, and the music is fabulous and it's just very exciting. But we were actually, I, I don't also know, again, this is kind of wildly off topic, but if you guys seen the, the animated film Coco? Sure. The I've seen it, I love it. Isn't that the Day of the Dead film? Yeah. Yes. Well, it's, there's a new one. Uh, cool. Well, there's a different one. It's called Book of Life. And the creator of that sh- movie, um, it came out before Coco, and it's uh, produced by Guillermo del Toro. And it's about, you know, wow. Day of the Dead. Is it yeah. a stop motion? Is it stop no, motion? No, 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 it's no. Computer. no. Me, the, if, um, it's a computer animated show. He just had a new show drop on Netflix called Maya and the Three, which is a bunch oh, of yeah. Latino or Latin uh, heritage, uh, like uh, Aztec gods, Mayan gods. And they're all, and since there's just, it's so rich in mythology, they just, he just kind of combined it all. Oh, um, very interesting. But De, uh, Book of Life was a movie that he went, he presented to Guillermo del Toro. They took it to Disney. Disney gave him the big finger and said, no one's going to take this. <laughs> and then they went and made Coco and that made an insane amount of money. And Coco is beautiful. And that's yeah. great music. Isn't, isn't that, Disney? isn't Coco yeah. Disney? Coco, Coco is Disney. Yeah, and yes. so Disney now, Disney now owns Book of they Life kinda, due to the Fox kinda, thing. But yeah, they kind of ripped them off in a way. Not necessarily. The stories are a lot different. I mean, there's a mild similarity because of the day. I mean, really, it's only the Day of the Dead similarity. Um, but Book of Life is fantastic. And it's got music from Paul Williams in it, if you guys are in oh, I love Paul Williams. Oh. You, were just, you were just talking about Phantom of the Paradise the other day. I remember uh, I, I remember the episode where he uh, uh, went on the Muppet Show. Oh yeah, he was, he, he was on the Muppet Show all the time. Yeah, yeah. He's so short. He's he helped short write the music the for the Muppet movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Barbie, you, you were correct. Uh, so it's All Saints Day is November first. That's when we actually do that thing at the cemetery. And uh, yeah. but the day before is when everybody goes to the graveyard to wash the graves and order right. the flowers and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, it's like a stuff. whole thirty-six hours celebration. Yeah. 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 So but, I know, never really experienced the only time of the year that I dressed up in uh, in Halloween costume was uh, carnival, you know, uh, uh, in America, they call it Mardi Gras. So that's basically the time where we disguise ourselves. And uh, yeah. but I've read, you know, obviously the culture is it, it pervades everything and Halloween eventually makes its way. And you see all those like scary movies oh, that come right. out in the movies theater and stuff. But uh but Pete, you also grew up in Liverpool, so you you didn't really have 
Halloween that much, right? It's well, weird. Um, not yeah. only that, but Pete, your birthday is November, right? Say again, Ed. Your birthday is November first, isn't it? Uh, November second. Second. Okay. Yeah. So Pete's practically a Day of the Dead baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think the original Catholic holidays. I think all of them are. There's like All Souls Day, All Saints Day, All Hallows Day, All Hallows Eve. So yeah, I think thirty first, first, and second are all originally Catholic holidays. And they've become these half Christian, half pagan. And other things. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, talking from the pagan viewpoint, Beltane sure. was, the, you know, before the Catholics came in. The Catholics were fabulous. And I speak, my mother was Catholic, so I'm a lapsed Catholic, sort of. Me too. Um, <laughs> and, I'm Catholic. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that, that they, 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 they were very... Uh, the, early Christians were very clever because they made all their major holidays on previously pagan holidays. Right. right. Yeah. 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 The Christmas so, and Halloween, sure. So Beltane is the, the Gaelic uh, May 1st, I think? Is, is it? Oh, no. Am I thinking I Samhain? Or something? Beltane is yeah. spring and okay. Samhain, or apparently it's pronounced Samhain. I don't know how you oh, say right, it. Right, right. Samhain, yes. Yes, yeah. it was also right. a pagan. It was, it's been a long time since I was a member of a medieval music and theater group. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we had all these little, we had a medieval feast on one of these days. I think it is Sam, I don't know what it is, but um, the witch is yeah, the, the like sp spring and fall equinoxes are, are the yes, sort of calendar exactly. equivalents. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I was actually, I used to, to, to sing little Fay songs and play the recorder and dance yeah. charmingly and over swords, awesome. over swords. Over swords. Wow. Oh, okay. That's an interesting story. Yeah. The Highland fling or whatever it is, the sword dances. Oh, okay. well, I'm just glad that we can celebrate. All those weird dances birthday. that become utterly middle class all over the UK. And they're <laughs> all like bizarre uh, phallic symbolism, death symbolism, oh, yeah. <laughs> symbolism. Those, those well, giant all been gentrified and middle classed over the centuries. Well, when I was at university, I, I took the only uh, bagpipe class available in the United States at that time. And I got to be friends with the, the guy who was giving the, the um, class. And I told him I could do the sword dance. So I learned how to do the sword dance. So he said, listen, I'm doing this little show at this Catholic boys school. Do you want to come and do the dance? And so I was leaping over these swords, and you have to have the the um, sign of the stag, you know, and all this sort of stuff. Sure, and right. I, I suddenly realized that my kilt was slowly but surely slipping off my hips. Uh oh. None of those boys have ever forgotten that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I had to alter the dance. I was holding onto my kilt with one hand and leaping right. over the, the swords with another, and. The Jesuit priest took me out to dinner the week later because he yeah, was already did. armed by my <laughs> Well, I'm just glad you we consider my life choices, Miss Wild. He said, <laughs> <laughs> "It's getting it's getting scary again. It's getting scary." Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we can celebrate Pete's birthday on November second. Yeah, <laughs> Actually, we got a few birthdays, haven't we? Because tomorrow, uh, Halloween is is Robbie Rydenow's birthday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. Your birthday, Rob. Yeah. Um, today, Shout out, Robbie. Today, today is I don't know if it's Sorsha or Sorka. Some, some yes. of it with a hard oh, Sor yeah, Sorka and Eline. Yep. Yeah. Her yeah. birthday is today. Robbie's Doctor. tomorrow. And Nina Something and I's anniversary. I'm on Nina, the second. And Nina and ours anniversary is Halloween. Oh, oh wow. wow. Happy wow. anniversary. Yeah, That's we met great. in Chicago at a Fangoria weekend of horrors, and she was dressed as a female Cenobite. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> did did, uh, did people trick or treat at your wedding? <laughs> no, no, because we, we didn't get married on Halloween. We yeah, met I got married on Halloween. in August, but our first date was exactly a year later on Halloween. Oh, okay, that anniversary. That, yeah. Yeah. And our first meeting, our very first meeting yeah. on Halloween. Yes, yeah, so and we Doug met, Bradley and later was there. Day. He was the he was the master of ceremonies and the costume contest judge. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say he was the guy who got you married. That would have been cool. <laughs> that would be great. Gives a new meaning yeah. to helpers. Hey, that yeah. would be a great sort of, you know, parallel thing if Doug got um, 
you know, because anybody can become a doctor of religion. I think, yeah, or something. Very, yeah, very you, be, yeah, you can get enough yeah. side hustles. He, he, be a new hey, job. We'll renew our, our vows on the thirtieth. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, we get married by hell priest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> be a new job for renew, Doug. Yeah, we'll renew <laughs> by hell priest. <laughs> that would be terrific. Um, and actually, we're going to have Doug coming back uh, uh, soon. He just sent an email today confirming a date, so we're going to have Doug coming in oh. back. Oh, for for a part two interview, so I'm looking forward to that. And Ed, um, I mean Eric, I'm sorry, Eric. Did your family celebrate Halloween in any way? Oh, big time! Yeah, Rid ridiculous. <laughs> 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 I was on. We used to we used to leave the house with pillowcases, uh -huh. and yeah. we would we yeah. would tag we like would tag. Like Snoopy and Charlie Brown. You didn't have your <laughs> newfangled tubs and handles. <laughs> no, no, no. We didn't go to the, co we didn't buy costumes. We made them, but we would leave with uh, the big, long body pillow pillowcases. <laughs> and my yeah. brother would come up uh, about like an hour Santa in and just give us an empty one and take the other one back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> send you out for more. Well, I grew up in in uh, in the suburbs of Philly, so it was all row homes. So basically, we could cover like ninety houses in an hour. Wow. Cross, cross the street, go back up the other side. We could go to the next game street. Plan up, where so you would, like draw out the neighborhood and be like, "You guys go this route. We'll go this route." Oh, it was wow, under, and the amount of system. Wow. You never knew there were so many kids living in our candy. area. <laughs> like wow. thousands of kids just descending at dark. All I remember. Us. When I was young, my my uh, my mom made a Pac Man. It was the height of Pac Man fever, so she made me a Pac Man costume oh. you know, out of two huge pieces of paper that were all kind of stapled together with like cotton stuffed inside. Oh. So I couldn't see. There was no there were no eye holes or anything. Did you make the noise? Uh, waka waka I waka. I tried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you tried. Boy boy. <laughs> oh boy and this year there's been a lot of celebrities that have been dressing up as hellraiser and pinhead and stuff yeah. like that um yeah. i've seen uh on barbie's facebook you shared a video of the miz from wwe uh, isn't that amazing i mean pete did you I, I don't know if you got a chance to see that did you see that it was, oh, sure. it was a dance yeah, beautiful yes. and it was they, a dancing with the stars Dancing with the stars. I didn't know he was a wrestler. I didn't, I didn't know who he was. But their dance was amazing. And the costumes and makeup were incredible. The music was wonderful. Yeah, and I'd love to find out who did the makeup. I'd love to find out who did the makeup. Because he, he breaks her neck or something like that. No, I actually sound effect and she goes really there. oh yeah. Wow. yeah I actually have the video set up here so if I can share my screen I can play just a little bit um oh into yeah the let, call. Me, let me enable thank you, you know, I'm, I'm your amazing. enabler, You're my enabler. <laughs> You're enabler you keep enabling Ryan. me for the last nine years Ryan. Yeah. okay there we go Isn't you should be amazing? good this is uh, mainstream you know mainstream <laughs> network television you know big time money involved in this you know yeah no, it's going to be a copyright home. strike for us. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Can you hear the sound as well? No, no. I think the okay. sound is what. We so that is the Miz, uh, dressed as. Uh, and as he's Pinhead. a WWE wrestler, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I have to look admit, at that. I don't know. I don't know any wrestlers except for like The Rock and people. Who I know are the movie the stars. Sting, the Stinger. Um, I did makeup on the Sting, the guy who who's a wrestler called Sting. That yeah. is absolutely beautiful. Wow. Yeah. You have to be who careful not makeup? to poke each other with those pins in there. Yeah. <laughs> no. I want to find out who did the makeup and how those pins were done. Like, in other words, are they a flexible material? So in case they jam you or anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, but, that, uh, that what a great, good. what a great looking Paso Doble that they were doing there. <laughs> that oh, it's really, beautiful. Well, it's really well what? done. But see, I didn't quite... Oh. Didn't know who they were. Who's the girl? I'm going to have to depend on um, you guys to Carson, describe she's this. Been a regular for a long time. She's, you know, we we used to watch Dancing with the Stars. My wife liked it, and um, they had a couple of people who didn't just do. They had like really smart, inventive choreographers, and um, work with the couple, they've all moved right? on to have actual careers. And the only one <laughs> left who who does you know, what I would consider inventive and exciting choreography is is Whitney, who was mm -hmm. the female Cenobite in that 
Wow. Oh, her name is oh. Whitney. Okay. But uh, nice. I'm glad to see. It was extraordinary. Killed. Simon yeah, sent it, good. it um, uh, Wednesday, I think, and I said, "You've got to send this to Clive because you know it's such a <clears throat> beautiful." Homage. Oh, I'm sure tons of people are going to send it to Clive. Yeah, you know, he would yeah. love that. Yeah. But and isn't I, this amazing that this is happening? I mean, what a time for us to be alive, you guys. I mean, well, there's Megan the Stallion as well, right? Yeah, as a as a Hellraiser fan. I mean, how do you think I got Barbie and Pete here? I just uh, got this box and I solved it and here they are. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, there's more celebrities that have been dressing up as, as a, a Hellraiser character. It's, here's Megan the Stallion. And she uh, did a very sexy pinhead. Let me just show that. Here, it, here she is. Oh yeah, I saw yeah. that. And uh, who, there's who actually is, so who more is this pictures. Person? What is what is she known is, for? Is this just a photo <laughs> layout, Joe? Was this just for a photo layout, or what was this? Is it uh, music video, or? It was on Instagram. So she did a set of photos um, showing some of those. There's more than one, and then she also did a quick dancing video. Uh, too hot for YouTube. <laughs> But is it like a music video that's got a song attached? No, to it? so, no? it's it's just a. I think it's just a, 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 a dance on, video. Post, it's on her feed. Yes. Oh, what, is she is she a singer or something? What is she? Yeah, she's a singer. Yeah, she's okay. a, she's, well, she's a rapper and a singer. Thing though, with that, you know, the RuPaul, you know, show that had, you know, got Nick, got Nick, got Nick, and got uh, Nick. Uh, yeah. and then also they came on the Emmys and were up at the podium. You know, RuPaul brought got Nick up to the podium for the Emmy Awards. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and and got Nick um, second place, I think. Did a a casting uh, interview for one of the Hellraiser projects that's being done right now. Um, right. Right. I don't know what the result of that was, but uh, you know, they, apparently we saw a video that, that they didn't I, get the part. Yeah, I heard the yeah. voice saying they didn't get the part. But, you know, it's just amazing that this stuff is all happening. It's like, where are the stars aligning? I mean, Clive getting his rights back in a couple months. I mean, just all this amazing stuff is happening. Yeah. yeah. And the interesting tidbit, uh, Megan Thee Stallion's pinhead has the pins facing outward with the pointy ends. So that's pretty. Oh, uh, that's an interesting, yeah. oh. interesting twist. So well, like the porcupine. Yeah, very her, they get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's inevitable that, you know, Hellraiser has become such a part of the pop culture. The culture and, yeah. uh, and now with these two projects that are going on, uh, it's, it's expected to become a, an even bigger thing. So hopefully more conventions, more chances for actors from Hellraiser to get on there. Um, Make appearances and go to Yeah, they should, they, they should have you guys do cameos, Barbie. Yeah. Well, I think Doug does cameo. Oh, really? But yeah. not in these two new projects, right? Oh, no, no, no. I don't think so. That's what uh, Ryan meant, I think. He means like... Yeah, yeah. The, the Hulu movie and the, yeah. and the HBO TV series. So what, what's, what they're talking about is the app Cameo, where you can, uh, you can hire a celebrity to go on and, and say a message, like a birthday message for someone, you know. Yeah, that, that Doug, I think Doug is on that, but he does. Okay. Oh, oh, oh no, I was just saying that, that yeah, that, that, they, the that, that the people making those projects should, should invite... Hellraiser's uh, cast actors in, to yeah, cameo, to, yeah. To come on for little bit parts. <clears throat> oh, to do yeah. a cameo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Well, I think they they probably. Um, well, I don't know. The yeah. Details. I would, I would yeah, like to. Yeah. I would like to. See I think them. they probably would want to have a fresh slate. I would like well. to see the people involved in these contact Pete for some writing too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. I'm with you on that one. I'm with you. Pete, you actually uh, are releasing recently a <clears throat> script, a script for a Hellraiser, uh, which is, let me bring that up real quick. Bloodline. 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 Oh, yeah. I think Joe and Catalina, you guys have one already, right? You can show oh, it to us. Oh. Actually, yeah. This, I don't know if my thing, yeah, this. The paperback? The paperback. Yeah. Um, it, it got Actually, the printer is uh, right down the street from us. No kidding! Wow, is there any? Uh, it's in Capel, <laughs> and, What's on the uh, cover? I want to say. What's Could you show cover? that again? Could you show that again? I think I was sharing my screen at the time. Oh, there it is. My, oh, my stupid background is. Uh, it's disappearing because of your that's goofy okay. background. Hey, What's that's on the cover. Yeah. yeah. On the cover. Nice. On the cover. Yeah, actually, like. That's a good idea. I, I didn't know they, they did a nice job. I haven't physically seen it yet. <laughs> there are oh, some what? copies wow. on on, yep. on the. Web. Joe got one before you did, Pete. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we, as what soon does it look like? What as soon as like? Pete uh, tweeted about it, Catalina's like, hey, she threw the phone at me and said, buy this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, so, and, and it's a black cover and it has it has Hellraiser Bloodline on it. And it's got a sort of a background image of Pinhead. And I think I know who the actor is that that that's that Pinhead. Yeah, um, it's not it's not Doug. It's uh, yeah. It's not Doug. But Paul, someone else they recreated yeah. they did a, a, a duplicate actor somebody else to, to do a photo for the company. well yeah I, i'm pretty sure it, it's a it right an thing. existing photograph i think i think ryan's right yeah, yeah. yeah. the right but it's coming out from encyclopocalypse and uh and i'm, I'm the, stoked even I though say, i yeah i want to say catalina's boss from uh daily grindhouse is going to be the new editor of encyclopocalypse Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, oh, and his name is right? Preston Fassel. He's a real nice guy. But Pete, yeah. like, I, I read your foreword, so you never straight up said it. But is this the the spec script? Well, like, it was. I, it wasn't a spec, Joe, in in the sense that you know it was number four in the series, so we knew we were going to do it. But yeah, that is the um. Because you know, technically, spec means written on speculation. Like, will somebody buy this? Okay. And I was lucky enough to Tell have it. the job. <laughs> you know, um, so it wasn't technically a spec, but yes, it was the. What's in that book is the 1995 draft. I think technically it was my fourth draft, but that oh. was the one that Miramax Green lit. Okay. And um, is there any other illustrations in it? Uh, no. no, it's just um, what it is, Ed, is um, it's like, you know, like a tie in novelization. Yes, but it's that's not what it's meant to evoke. That's what it's meant to be like. <laughs> we couldn't have last year Encyclopocalypse did a novelization of my Wishmaster script. Oh, so they did. Because no yeah. we didn't do one at the time. Um, and obviously we couldn't do that with this and nor would I want to because Clive has the literary rights. So mm. we couldn't have somebody, you know, turn the script. Novelize it. Yeah, it. novelize it. Yeah. So they just publish the script. But it's just, it, it's like a, it's a movie tie-in book that is a screenplay rather than a novelization. And oh, as I said, I announced it, you know. It was there any kind of an issue with getting getting the rights? Them anyway, they're movie collectibles. They just, they <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Absolutely. What, Ryan? Well, well, nerds like us read them. But but sure. it, it, was there any issue with getting the rights to to publish that again? No, that that's um, he has the rights. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm going to be very careful about this. <laughs> the thing about the good thing about unions is the WGA, WGA yeah. retains certain rights for writers, not copyright. You don't have the copyright. You surrender copyright to the film company. So as we say very clearly on the Indicia page in the book, the copyright to Hellraiser Bloodline, the motion picture is Miramax's. But the WGA has won what they call a separation of rights publication clause for all writers of original screenplays, by which they mean either a spec, Joe, that was sold or um, something that has this, you know, what they call the single card credit, which is there's no story by three people, idea by so-and-so, screenplay by two people. So that one is a, is a single written by me. So I have separation of rights, publication rights. But just in case Merrimax's lawyers are listening, <laughs> we're in no way claiming to have a copyright <laughs> on Is, is, is Merrimax still around? I don't Miramax think it is. Still it's no longer on. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw a movie that had the a brand new movie that had the Miramax sure. card on it. Uh, I don't know okay. what it was. Yeah, no, the, the company crap. is still around. Yeah, I, I mean, think I, w I wonder I what the, the nightmare would be of trying to get you know the an a, appropriate like with Nightbreed like a re making of the original Bloodline you know with all the the original script you know like try and get it done over right you know like. <laughs> The night breed. Yeah, I think that's you need like a director that. that wants to put his name on it. I think to right. start with. Yeah. Are, are you talking about restoring a director's cut, oh, or are you talking about yeah, remaking to try, the to, movie? try to make something out of it that's, you know, not the Alan Smith. I, I don't think. I don't think that has a chance it's of happening. Just, I mean, yeah. I mean, this will bore Joe because he's read it in the forward just two days ago. 
But one of the reasons one of the reasons I put this out was, and I actually call the introduction the writer's cut as a kind of joke. Yeah, because, because <laughs> everybody's going to be disappointed. You know, everybody wants the director's cut. You, you won't get a director's cut of Bloodline because they fucked Kevin over so much, and you know every day the budget was being slashed. So I, I know Joe, you're very familiar. Jose, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know that uh, the producer at one point assembly, the workman's assembly. Yeah. So, you know, you could put together a linear assembly of what Kevin shot, but it would in no way be a director's cut because huge swaths of effects stuff wouldn't be in it because it was never shot. Several major sequences wouldn't be in it because they were never shot. So I mean, like to get the rights to make a, like an animated version from your script or something. Oh, that Kevin, would be cool. Like, have you seen how these uh, other versions of scripts have been turned into dark horse comics? You know, mm, they made I, graphic novels. I think the likeness of Hellraiser is still copyrighted, so I don't think that yeah, would be right. a possibility. But. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, you'd have, just, they'd have yeah, to get involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but mm. at will. I'm just in love with, the with Doctor Who. I know some old you missing know. Doctor Who episodes have been animated. Yes, I've seen uh, that. The classic Doctor Who. I just sure. saw The Power yeah. of the Daleks the other day, and it was uh, brilliant. They made it in black and white animation. Is and that everything. where William Hartnell uh, regenerates? The I think re so. Regeneration yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah that was they, animated. Technically a Troughton story. but Yeah. 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 They well, switched anyways, to the I'm, second I want to drive it back towards Hellraiser. I just love Pete's script, and I would love to see it done... You know, like now I'm blind in my mind's eye. I see it finished, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, well, I think we were robbed of a, a great way to wrap up the franchise at the time. I, I well, thought that would be. Guys, thank you. I mean, Ed, it won't happen. <laughs> keep it in your mind's eye. And, I will. And I, will. Enjoy. <laughs> I have and, it in my uh, heart. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, no, nobody's going to do that. I keep that, that heart in a jar. Launch the thing <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully it'll be great and it'll go in a completely new direction and Good luck to everybody involved. Yes, and you can we you can read the you know the writer's cut. You can read it. the writer's cut. So yeah, the, you know the, the even paperback, though paperback the paperback. Yeah, I, I know that Encyclopocalypse is known for making audiobooks. Do you think they're going to make an audiobook of this, or it's not in the works for now? Well, that's I a good idea. <laughs> See, yeah, great idea. I need to be careful because this would be okay. a little gray area. Sure, sure. Oh, right. And, and by the way, not... get off me. You know, Joe's got projects coming up. I'm sure Bobby has. I know Eric has. Absolutely. No, I just, I just want to I'll let people this know. With this. Um, You're stealing my self-plugging time, Pete. Yeah. I'll, I'll be right out of your way in a Feeling moment. I'll, I'll be moving <laughs> right along. But they asked me. So here's what it is. Um, I think it's a brilliant that, idea, by the way, publishing the script. It's it's wonderful. And well, no, it's, listen. <laughs> People have said one of the people audiobooks are the best. But one of the reasons I did this was that people are so dissatisfied with Bloodline, the finished movie. Uh, you know, not Kevin's fault, not my fault. Um, but they don't like Universe. the movie. <laughs> um, I, I have no real need uh, on my part, at least, to, to rehabilitate two and three. Um, you know, there's always a few little changes, but I mean, essentially. The hellbound that you see is the hellbound that I wrote. Yeah. And hell on earth that you see is the hell on earth that I wrote. So from one a personal them. point of view, <laughs> I, I don't see a need to put the scripts out there. This one, you know, for the thousand people who give a shit, you know, it, it, it's <laughs> not for the mainstream, but for the, <laughs> the it is collectible though, collectible, will love whatever it. it is, you know, yeah. they might like to see, to see yeah. well, this yeah. is what it was meant to be. Yeah. So that's the difference for me between doing two and three and doing this one. And, and it'll sit on the I shelf might, nicely with don't this novelized. The thing about an audio book is it's tricky because, as I say, the WGA gives uh, writers publication rights, mm -hmm. not novelization rights per se. You have to negotiate for that. So they give them publication rights on the script. Weirdly, they give them stage rights which is how I was able to do Wishmaster the Musical. In yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but what they don't give them is audio dramatization, right? Uh, Weirdly, they give them stage dramatization, but not audio. Sure. So, so if, we could do a play of so, so the question is, <laughs> we said- Give it a kid's school. If, if you got actors and a narrator 
to read the script, this is one for the lawyers, is that a publication or is that a dramatization? It's a not performance. a dramatization. Performance. Right. Right. Yeah. You've we got the narrative read of a play. Yeah. Yeah. Play yeah. Like, so like uh, Paul Kane did the dramatization of uh, the Hellraiser. Yeah. Hellbound um, Heart. Yeah. Hellbound Heart. Uh, but I think it's great that the script is is going to be published. And it's when I say the script, I mean the novelization of the script because it, no, it, it's, it's not a novelization. It's just a straight script. Correct. It's yeah, just it's, a, it's, okay. It's, just a straight it's, Okay. Uh, Got it. It's uh, it's like a screenplay almost, pretty much. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't well, think you can see yeah, it. All it's, it's, it'll be a great collectible yeah. to stick on the <laughs> shelf with all your My all mistake. your other this book I ever other... wrote. Yeah. Joe, you got one of the ones with blank I, pages I just, on it. You know, found an old draft of the script, took out all the exclamation marks, and oh, yeah. uh, then they and then wrote a three-page introduction, and it was like, oh look, two weeks later, a book. <laughs> was this easy? Oh, glorious! Oh, I just yeah. want to point out, I still have my Hellbound script. Oh, mm -hmm. right. that's collectible. Yeah. Well, it, there's it, one how many problem. have assigned it? The, what? How, how many, many have signed have assigned it? it? You should gather all the signatures on it now. There's a problem. You'll get twenty-two pounds for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, the, the thing is, is that. Um, you may not be aware of my previous history as a meme artist. Oh, I'm very. I went aware. into mm -hmm. when I went. Well, I, I sort of thought, oh, this is great. You don't have to memorize any lines. So I did all these <laughs> mime shows and oh, did you know, and then got with music business and then signed to RCA and did all this crazy stuff. But I was a classically trained mime, and. So my my script learning skills are leave a little bit to be desired. This is my um, excuse and I'm sticking to it. So every time we had a scene, I had a scene in Hellraiser, I'd rip the page out and, oh, no. and switch it into my leather bosom thing or whatever. So I could go whip it out and look at it and then whip it back in again. So now you and have a damaged script. I have a damaged script. I'm no, like, she has a collectible script. Mind? Are you kidding? How collectible is that on eBay? Or, it's or got at least 23 pounds now. <laughs> script played on it. Warmed Please by the bosom sweat. of the That's female what I call Barbie, I think the script is more missing. valuable than you think. Added value. Missing. Added value. That's value. the problem. Yeah, if they yeah. never put them back in the script, I went, what the fuck? Why, oh. why am I missing all my bits? And then I remembered the horror because I did the same with this thing I did for the BBC. I would always rip it up, stick it down someplace <laughs> that I could get to easily. Although God knows in the Hellraiser co costume, I'm not quite sure. I, I might have put it up my sleeve. Cleavage sweat on the pages. <laughs> now it's 25 sweat. pounds. Yeah. Woohoo! But now, no, it's it's all very sad, actually. Panties. But, um, panties. You know, I still do that. I still like that. You're crazy. Oh, well, it's worth rebinding and getting all the signatures on it. For yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. I could just get those um, yeah. pages back somehow. I don't know. But, but I, think I did think about selling it, actually. And I thought, no, no, it's still part of my history. Semi glorious career. I can't sell yeah. it. I have my original VHS tape <laughs> of Hellbound as well. Oh, like a screener? Oh, wow. No, I think I, I bought it. <laughs> oh, okay. Just a regular uh, yeah. VHS release. Yeah, they, they didn't use yeah, yeah, yeah. it as anything, Joe. It was. Uh, oh. Yeah, okay. I remember I said, oh, can I have one of the boxes the last day on set? And the prop guy just laughed at me. Oh, I mean, no. <laughs> that was so mean. Uh, when, I worked on, um, when I worked on Shudder for. Um, I met Ashley and Doug right. on the season finale of uh, The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. We showed Hellbound and Hell Comes to Frogtown. And my team did all the Hellraiser effects. So we had the chains coming out. We did all the lighting gags. We did all sorts of stuff. We built a pillar of souls, but it was like a redneck pillar of souls. <laughs> and and uh, so there's like beer cans all over it. And, like, uh, you know, made you out know. of a pallet, an old pallet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, hey. Ashley brought in some uh, old, uh, some of her artwork and everything. But she had a box. She had the box from Hellbound, um, one of Simon's boxes, and I, she let me hold it. Wow! Oh, wow. But she made Doug. She had Doug. Uh, she was like, "Yeah, I, I didn't believe I it. I was like, "No way! This is you, you got one of these." Well, I don't know why I would ask that. I mean, I wasn't there. 
<laughs> but um, yeah, Doug, uh, he Find confirmed it. that was one of Simon's boxes. Oh, did we free? And, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the director was like, Joe, you need to hold this. And so they took my picture with it. I felt like a total geek. Oh, that's great. But wow. yeah, I don't know. Awesome. I, apparently a lot of people have Simon's boxes before he passed away. Yeah, he sold a bunch toward the end before he passed away. I mean, not... Well, he, he, he was making them. Yeah, yeah he, he was making them for a while. And uh, you could also get yeah. the plaque, you know, the, bla the brass plaques of just the, the metal pieces and stuff. Well, he was fantastic. Did, did he, you was, see, he was fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry, did you see, you know, in the brilliant uh, Leviathan documentary about the making of the Hellraiser films, I think it was just Hellraiser 1 and 2, he has a whole section of describing what all those things mean. I just yeah. thought it was oh, yeah. mine. Like the pretty had... lady and the three expanding circles. Right. Oh, right. it all had yeah. absolute meaning for him. And he said, these all mean that. And this is from some Egypt, ancient Egyptian, whatever. I don't know if it was Egyptian, but um, no, no, it was, uh, I was astonished. I mean, I never knew. I was astonished when I found out because uh, I didn't notice it in the film, but all these little elements around the main center, when the box does the star configuration, they would make a little drawing of the engineer monster. And I was like, the first time I saw that, it blew my mind because someone put it all together and showed how it looked like. And I was like, oh yeah, that's that's when I started realizing that there was a lot more layers to the design than I initially thought. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Early, early in the 90s, I was lucky enough to meet Bob Keen and go on set when he was working on one of the Waxworks films. And he gave me a black and white print of the artwork and explained to me all those little designs, how when it turns a certain way, you can see the engineer and there's a face. There's, there's a whole bunch of them. Of course, in the Leviathan documentary, Simon does go through all of those as well and show how you know, each of those configurations can make a picture, a different mm. face, a different design, you know, and it's, it's brilliant. Mm. Oh, no, he just yes. put so Simon much was, uh, love into it. Clever lad, and, and a yeah. lovely guy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we're sorry he's gone. God bless yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, rest in peace. Barbie, uh, what, uh, how's this year been for you? I mean, I know they're it's probably having, have a, yeah, <laughs> right? I mean, there have been a lot of conventions and stuff. I think that that part of the industry has been slowly gaining back uh, uh, people going to those things, but yeah, but they're not bringing people in from Europe yeah. or the UK or anything. And yeah. I, 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 th I totally understand because you know until they get the thing where, um, you know, the whole quarantine thing is is not go. Yeah. But you know, Doug just announced. You probably noticed that he was not attending any more conventions in the United States because he just didn't feel the safety elements were there. Yeah. And he, he had a mask on throughout the whole thing. And somebody said, why are you wearing a mask? You've been, you've been famously been va vaccinated. And he said, well, you still can get it. And he's yeah. kind of vulnerable health wise. And, and it was just, you know, I, I've been through, um, I've had to sort of mix with people. I've become a complete, <laughs> uh, what's the right word? Uh, misanthrope? Hermit. No, yeah, well, sort of, up, up until well, I was vaccinated and stuff. But even now, um, I was had to go on a train, and it was full of coughing students. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, they're all, you know, and it was just like, oh, yeah. But they were wearing masks, most of them, so that was okay. But it was just, um, I, I am kind of like, whoa, too close. <laughs> and, um, um, but, to, you know, I have to start getting back into things. It's been very, very rough creatively. Mm -hmm. But I did, um, a friend of mine said, um, here, let me just make sure I get it right. Um, he's had me involved in a, my crib notes, um, an anthology okay. and called Circles of Hell, Stories Inspired by Dante's Inferno. Oh, cool. And he gave me lust, right? Wow, yes, perfect. Now, guess what, guys? I mean, some of you may have read some of my stuff. When I write, start writing a story, I don't think I'm going to make this really erotic or sexy or something. It just turns out that way, right? Yay! Made us <laughs> All right. Now this an audio so book good. narrated. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, it's an audio book narrated by Doug Bradley now. Yeah, yeah. I listened to that uh, last year. It was great. Yeah. He's yes, wonderful. Sir. I used to listen to his, he used to send me bits and I would just laugh and laugh because I think it's a really funny book. I know it's sick, but you know. Um, but he just, his, 
his yeah his his take on it was was absolutely wonderful but uh, i actually hadn't been writing a lot i didn't feel very inspired and my my i do have a project i'm working on with my partner it's actually a musical part project and it, um um sorry <laughs> that sounded terrible um uh which is to do with what my um character uh, I created for the Hellbound Hearts anthology called Sister Sister Celise, who's the a female Cenobite. So I'm going to try and get um, those three Cenobite stories that I've already written mm -hmm. um, that appeared in my collection. And I'm going to try and put them together as some kind of thing with the CD of the song, which I will be performing. Oh, and, right. and it's, it's wow. going to be really, this is first now, it's, it's very close to you know, me putting my vocals on, it's taken a long time, but um, this, it's, you guys got the exclusive because it's going to be a Sister Solis project. Oh, but wonderful. in the meantime, uh, 20 years wow. ago, I started a story about a dominatrix who goes back to Victorian Lo London to meet her Victorian dreamboat, Jack the Ripper, right? And I only got to a certain point about how is this going to work? And then Dean Drinkle came up to me and said, do you know, do you want to do the Dante Inferno? I'll give you lust. And I was going, I can't think of anything lusty. It has to come naturally. To be given lust was difficult. And then I thought, hold on a minute. I've got this fragment of a story. <laughs> Let them all end up in hell, you know? And um, it was enormous, very satisfying to f finish this story. And it's called Liaison. Liaison. And Liaison, and it's in Circles of Hell, stories inspired by Dante's Inferno. And um, they, they, they sort of get their comeuppance, but they're quite thrilled to be in hell, actually. Brilliant. So, um, <laughs> wow. I'm so excited because the, yeah, uh, uh, the last one I read from you was Patient K. And uh, oh, of yeah. course, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, we had Sister Celise in the uh, Hellbound Hearts anthology. And yes. then when you did Voices of the Dam, that's where all the little uh, War in Hell uh, trilogy of stories that develop, yeah. you know, Sister well, Solis's. It was the, the Silesium Pandoric, and she makes her own box, because why should Pinhead all the fun? And then the third <laughs> one is the Silesium Rebellion of the Female Cenobites. And yeah. so all the females think, oh, well, I was taught to play second banana to you know who. And unfortunately, Sorry. it ends very badly for everybody. <laughs> you have music to that box, don't you, Barbie? Yes, yes. My you played partner. it for me at a convention. I'm sorry. We were at oh. we were at a San Antonio in Texas. We were at San Antonio. I was working, I was working um a booth uh of mystery boxes. So like I got these Hellraiser mystery boxes that are really huge. Um a bunch of horror toys. And Barbie was on top on uh, doing a panel and uh in front of this giant jumbotron in the in the Oh God, where were we? We were in a giant stadium, the Astrodome. We were in the Astrodome. Yes, and my dumbass is over there just screaming, but yeah, you, like you... exactly four years ago, all the photographs from Alamo City Comic Con came up. And it's the only convention I've done on my own, which was uh. strange. But luckily, I bumped into, you know, some of people that I've known from conventions and stuff, and we hung out together. And um, um, that was enormous fun. Uh, but no, no, he he actually composed this little theme tune. I was using it as a, a cell phone ringer, I think. But I, I stopped it because it was too sinister. Oh. Every time the phone rang, I went, oh, no, who is it? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, so. Opening coming hell. from inside the house. And Sorry? we have... The it's coming inside the house. It's coming inside the house. Oh, do, yeah. do everybody else, Bobby, your, your partner is known to me because... Um, but I don't know if people, do you know who she, well, um, he was in a band called Sailor back oh, in the... Oh, no, 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 we try not to sort of meld our lives, oh, but this sorry, is going to come, no, no, no out, Ryan. It's, cool. it's cool, actually, because <laughs> um, this, this is going to come out, Things and, um, oh, no, where's Eric gone? <laughs> and um, it's yeah. going to come out, so at some point, you know, it'll... Okay. It'll be, the, the funny thing was, I was at a, a, a convention a couple of years ago. Instead of this video. And um, this guy came up and went, um, is George with you? And I said, no, no, he never does. 
he never does conventions. He did one convention in Germany and he just held it our coats for us when we did a Q and A. And it was like, his, Doug came over and said, you are the most patient of men, you know? But he said, <laughs> no, we do this again. But um, he had one of the singles <laughs> that he produced in the seventies, which is really sweet. He desperately hoping that he was gonna be there so he could have signed it. But um, no, and it's, it's like I said, we try and keep it, you know. Sure, sure. Not terribly what, separate people. When you I said mean, you had a musical project, I almost wondered if this was the return of shock. <laughs> no, no, I actually have nightmares about shock reforming and I can't oh, really? costumes or something. <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't be able to fit into my costumes, but um, no, no, that's, that's uh, sadly, because get some good stuff and like i said we were signed to rca yeah but um no no that no it's um yeah this this project is going to be because we were just saying what are we going to do you know and um i mean he's he's been working on things and he doesn't you know he's very good at working on things every day Got but it. Got um, it. you know i've i've had a, a tough time finding inspiration but uh like i said fi finishing this story was just I, Pete, I don't know if you have the same thing. You've had like little stories languishing in the floor or something for years. Oh, and then God, yeah. yeah. You're like, wow, I finished this. That's so cool, you know. Right. Oh, yeah, they can lie around and you think, I'm never going to be able to do anything with that. And then you get a different problem, which is, oh, they want something for this. I've got no, oh, uh, yeah. Thank God. Thank God for the fragments. That's what I yeah. always say. Yeah. yeah. By the way, there's another short story that I wrote um a few years ago it was going to be in something called green and pleasant land and i made it was an english set story but then it's now it's changed it's set in canada now but it's called blue eyes and that's going to be um, i've been working with chris alexander who's um used to be the editor of fangoria editor-in-chief of fangoria and we're working on the film script for that but obviously the pandemic has made things poopy in the extreme to get yeah, technical sure. and um so things are and we also need he's he's really good at making low 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 micro budget films and this would would need some cash that was actually one of the things i was gonna ask you about an update on uh, blue eyes because i was looking at your website this morning yeah. and the same website where you can see the design for the silicium pandoric which was designed by eric oh. gross right down there eric yeah. Do you want um, to tell us a little bit how you tackle that design? Oh um, my God, there is a physical box. This camera. Yes. Oh, wow. That looks right. fantastic. Oh, it looks so three-dimensional. Is it three? It is. <laughs> wow. It's a, oh, it's beautiful. Eric, it's beautiful. I always love looking at these boxes you do. I'm going to have to send you a couple. I've got like, there's shelves behind me. They're just sitting on it. It took you, me forever to... You truly make some beautiful designs, man. Yeah. Thank you. This are one, I actually. Uh, are they 3D printed? No, 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 they're handmade. But once I make the master, then I can mold it. Uh, it was just, I know I had to go old school. 3D doesn't catch the, the detail. Mm -hmm. uh, not yet. Anyway, a couple of years. This one, this one, uh, it's because of the size that uh, if you look, see how it's got those dark areas around the edges. Yes. Right. Let me see if I can show you. Right. It's trees with lots and lots of birds in them. I actually had to oh. go back like a year or two ago. I went back and I actually redid it so you I could define the trees and the birds. And now it's just so much prettier. Wow. So this is one of the, the yes. Yeah, so now I'm actually uh, waiting on a shipment. Uh, everything closed down last year. So I've got a shipment coming in of uh, rubber. Once that's done, I can actually like send you a copy of it finally and send everybody else. Copy. You mean silver? Those like the blackbirds from the Hellbound Heart? Yeah, actually, kind of. Uh, 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 when I when I met. Oh, I don't remember the blackbirds in the Hellbound Heart. Uh, oh, it's just a quote that says that uh, hell was a place where you could see almost like vast black birds in a perpetual tempest or something like that. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, of course I had to read the, the novella again before I, I wrote the story. So mm -hmm. and, uh, Sister Celise, mm -hmm. but then um, we, we met Eric at a convention. Which one was it? Was it? Both. 
2012. Yeah. It was, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It was like Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Yeah, Cherry Hill. That's right. Oh, I was at that one. The, yes, that's where a, I met you. Yeah. Monster Mania, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we talked about it. And then I thought, well, why shouldn't Sister Elise have, Sister Elise have her own box? Uh, and so we sort of worked on that. And then the, then it'd be nice to have a trilogy. So then I did the rebellion story. And then the fourth story I'm working on is that basically hell is just frozen over. <laughs> Where do you go? Sorry. And, That's an uh, interesting art. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically everybody's gone except Sister Celise. And, um, but this other demon has um, impregnated her. And so she starts giving birth to all these little tiny beetles from her eyelids and every, you know, I, bleh, and they <laughs> become demons. And so she repopulates hell. So she becomes nice. the new version of Lilith in a way. But, but people should buy Voices of the Dam to read that. Well, unfortunately it is out of print now. Oh, and, sure. Uh, such a but, beautiful, you know, um, because every piece had, um, Eric has two pieces of art in it. Mm -hmm. um, Clive allowed me the use of three of his artworks. Uh, Vincent Sammy, Ben Baldwin. Um, John Gallagher, oh, I think. I can't find real people's names. Um, Vincent Sammy, Steve McGinnis. Um, Tara. Bunch of people. Yeah, well, I just want to remember all the artists because their stuff was so beautiful, you know, and yeah. I feel bad, but um, I hope I got all of them. But uh, no, it just each, they they were, oh, and the guy who did the covers for Boom Comics, famous artist. Gallagher? Daniel Sarah? Sorry? Daniel oh, Daniel Sarah. Sarah. Daniel, Daniel Sarah. Sarah, yeah. But also Nick Percival. Oh, oh yeah, Nick right. Percival, right, yeah, yeah. He did my um, thing for Zulu Zombies. From Rourke's Drift to That's Milton. right. Zulu Zombies. So, um, no, it's, it's, I'd love to get this book. It's, it needs to be out there again. So. It, uh, it's still available on Amazon. I'm guessing it's secondhand because now it's shot up to like 70 bucks for a, a paperback. And, I and... actually found a copy for $1,000 or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Every Eric. time we would run it, see Barbie at a convention and go to her booth, that book was always gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as it should. It, it's, it's a, a, it's a nice gorgeous piece of work. book, well, too. If I, if I start doing conventions again, I've got a few. I've socked away a few. But um, yeah. it's it's at the moment, they're just in a box. <laughs> so, Eric. Yeah, well, and that once you do, that won't last. They'll be gone in a heartbeat. Eric, uh, yeah. very, the rubber you're waiting on, are you waiting on silicone? Is that it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they said it would should be in uh, about a month's time. So I'm just waiting on the shipment. I uh, uh, funny story. It's uh, I work to to do the work. It makes a lot of mess because of the tools I work with. So I went out and bought a sandblast cabinet so I could, you know, I could put my hands and not make make a mess in the house because if I work outside, it blows everywhere. It's, it's nasty. It's like working with confetti. And the wife looks at me one day when I'm packing it and she sees blasting cabinet. She goes, you're not blowing anything up in this house. Yeah. <laughs> I had to explain to her what it was. Hammering. Well, you know, considering, considering she's seen me do some strange things. And, right. Yeah. Is it, that was, are you buying smooth on rubber or where? Are yeah. You? Yeah. Actually smooth on. Cause uh, they're, uh, they're like the next state over. So sometimes I drive out there to the, uh, the plant. I see. Uh, they've got a nice little, uh, it, it saves a lot in shipping, eh? you know, like sometimes it's $50. Oh, yeah. Just five gallons. I, I can drive out there in an afternoon, get, get everything I need. And like, oh, that looks good. Oh, that, you know, it's like, it's, it's like a toy store. Right. right. Um, I go in there. I talk to, I talk to the teams cause they, they've been curious about this whole process of what I'm putting together. So they let me play with all their toys and um, yeah. Cause apparently uh, I tried doing 3d printing and it just looked horrible. It just yeah. no, no detail at all. So then I went old school with this and um, which was kind of going like almost like how you do uh, mem remember the printers, how they used to do acid etched plates. Yep. Yep. It was kind I of mean, like, I, I know about, you know, the rubber stamp technology and right. how you can make like a drawing and make it in reverse. And, you know, also about how Simon Says did it, you know, with brass etching with acid etching and stuff. Unfortunately, all these plants are closing down, so they're few and far between. And the only reason I didn't go with brass originally was 
it's just it produces a lot of uh, stuff you can't get rid of afterwards. Yeah, it's chemical, not it's, chemical waste. You know? Right, right. So it was just it was just a choice. Plus, this stuff holds pretty well. I mean, I've thrown these things against the wall and not a scratch on them. So you mean I'm the quite solid happy. resin castings of the boxes? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I mean, I, I've seen a couple of Simons uh, over the years, and they just like fall apart over oh, time. Oh, yeah, it's real it's, block of wood with glued on. You know, just lacquer brass, on these yeah. thin brass. Yeah. Sheets, Starts lifting yeah. the panels a little bit. Yeah, yeah so they weren't the wood intended contracts for and expands. long-term collectibles. They were intended just for screen props. You know, right, right. Yeah. And uh, this, what I'm working on, is something you can handle daily. And it's they used not to have change. one of those, one of those NECA ones that was wood with the brass on it, and the brass would kind of start lifting off, and you'd have these little tiny spines all over. So every time you touch it, you get like brass slivers in your fingers yeah. that's the blood sacrifice <laughs> right yeah that's the danger of the box it's but, the blood uh, brought the him thing back about the the ones that you make i mean i know that there's different types of resins and you can get a resin that is actually not a fragile material like it can take a, it's got a bit of a rubberness to it you know Oh, no, this is like really hard. I have some yeah. panels that Eric, no, no, no. you sent me. I mean me. that there yeah. are different rubbers and silicones yeah. and yeah, yeah. materials mm -hmm. and you can get a urethane or something that, you know, you could literally make his box out of something you could bounce off the wall. I mean, <laughs> And that the thing is those those edges, right? The edges were the, the trouble part that you had to uh, uh, fix, right? Because yeah. you yeah. wanted a continuous, perfect, symmetrical uh, continuation of one yeah, design into the next panel. See, yeah. if you look real close, the skulls, they wrap, it's a little out of focus. Wow. They're on the around. edge. Yeah. Yeah. So right up to oh, the edge. That that's was fantastic. The thing. But the nice thing is they're really tactile. I mean, you could have your eyes closed and just you automatically just kind of like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's I'm blind. I'd love to touch one sometime. <laughs> I'll send you one. Really? <laughs> yeah, I will be happy to send you that, one. my friend. <laughs> I won't forget. He I've got. I, I'm, I'm, Throw against the wall? Is it that that hard, or is that something else? No, we were just talking about materials. That's not a break the cup hard. before I break this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Not recommending you do that. So though. no, what I'm saying is this could. is something people can get a hold of and not worry yeah. about touching or breaking, or they don't have to use gloves yeah. and or I mean, the I just, panels aren't going to lift and all that is what he's saying. Right, right. And I, I put uh, 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 metallic pigments in the resin when I make it, so this oh, way nice. even if you. It's like Formica, so sure. uh, you polish it even then. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I went to school, uh, uh, when I was in college, I actually studied metals. I was studying jewelry at the time, so I've got a background. And you know, to to attach metal to wood, you know, uh, unless you're going to use rivets or something, it's or glue, it's not going to hold. Over time, it's going to wear away. But I also learned about resin in college, so thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? This is probably the best material because. I don't worry about once it leaves my hands, that's it. It's permanent. It's not going to, it's not going to be affected by moisture in the air. It's not going to fall apart and you can have fun shipping or a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And now, uh, you know, and over time I'll be able to actually make these in pieces so I can make them movable ah. right now, just oh, like wow. get the solid ones done. Nice. Yeah. So do you have any like time frame on that or is this, is it still just a wait and see what's going on with this whole uh, chain of supply uh, supply chain situation? I'm just waiting on the chain. In fact, uh, I might be heading up to, uh, it's in Eastern Pennsylvania. I might be heading up there in about a week or two okay. uh, because yeah. I got a call from one of the guys saying we might be getting in. I say, I'm going to come up there and hold you to this because yeah, <laughs> just been, you know, I mean, I've got the resin. To get flipped away from you. <laughs> Well, no. problem with with supply and demand and all this kind of stuff in america and i guess in in the uk especially all over the world all over the world well it doesn't help because of not to get political but uh brex shit as i call it <laughs> is not <laughs> right. helping things at all but uh, um certainly with with um you know how things are going it's it's um i could see why Things. I mean, there was one point I was waiting a month and a half for something to come from the United States. Uh, uh, it's, 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 you know, it's really, uh, well, yeah. I don't even know why I'm saying this, <laughs> but I hope your, your delivery comes in soon. Well, I think well, the artistic and creative thing is the main thing. Like, in other words, your brain is still thinking of new boxes all the time. And I love that, you know. Actually, it's, it, 
Yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep us posted on that. Uh, we'd love to uh, know more about when the followers of the Pandorix is going to do a resurgence with, uh, with some merchandise. We, yeah, we, that's we, why I went quiet. I figured like until I yeah. can get my hands on something, I'll just like let everybody else go crazy on Facebook because this past <laughs> year, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to sit and watch for a while. I don't know what's going on, but I don't like what I'm saying. People can be very impatient, uh, especially if you announce something and then they're waiting for it. I also, oh, go ahead, Barbie. No, no, I just, I just thought of something because um, I went back to acting a couple of years ago. Sorry, total change of subject, guys, but I am desperately getting my plugs in. And because you're talking about the pandemic. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <Well>, Doric. <laughs> yeah, it was me. I'm sorry. I did this whole thing. This is thing Dark Diddies Presents. And right. I was in oh, yeah. thing called The Offer, which had me, Simon Bamford, Nick Vince, Oliver Smith, Smith. and Ken Cranham in it, to playing different parts. It's on Amazon Prime. And then they said, oh, can you come back and do a hard-bitten, um, boy, do I look hard and bitten, <laughs> a news reporter person. Are so you in dad? <laughs> I'm in dad. Yeah. Oh. Wow. And like we've been waiting. It's so close now. Hopefully other people get to see it in conventions and stuff. I, I want it to come out. Well, it's just had its first showing. At, they're, it, they're doing the festival circuit now. Yeah. A long time in coming because I think I've Tim Dry, who's also in it, who's an old friend of mine. He played the monster in Extro. And yeah. he was really. Oh, I love Extro. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, he's in it as well. And um, but then they put in this this footage uh, and stuff, and it was actually about a, sort of a zombie, a plague of zombies, if you like. And um, uh, but it, they tied in some stuff from you know the, some stuff that they were able to use from the news in this this oh. sort of real to be go to go into the actual story. For dark ditties, yeah. For from for recent events, and it's it's extraordinary. It was almost prescient because they didn't know there was going to be some hideous plague. You know, we are living in plague years now. I mean, that's yeah. about being scared. You know, I've become twenty eight days later, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that exactly. I mean, all these things are are sort of like that. But um, yeah, I I. Uh, I've found the last 20 months. Has it been 20 months now? 19 months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Zay and I have been podcasting from thousands of miles apart before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> We've been social distancing a lot. We social yeah. distanced from different continents for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You know, extra, you know, just ground back to extra. I love that monster because he's on his butt and he's going backwards. His he's scooting. Yeah. Is on the back of his head. Yeah. And it's a really creepy, weird it, motion. It, you know. I have a story. I'm going to be really mean and steal Tim's story. <laughs> it's they, Halloween. He, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, they played, uh, they were, ro they didn't play. They were robotic mime and music group called Tick and Talk, him and Sean Crawford. And they got, um, they, they went to the casting and um, they wanted a G.I. Joe type and they wanted the monster. And Tim said, oh, I've got this great idea because he thought Sean would get to be the monster. He said, uh, why not go on, you know, basically on my back, but having my arms and legs, you know, sort of like that. Ooh, and yeah. The monster's head here. And he thought Sean was going to get the part, but he, that Sean. That was his idea? That was yeah. his idea? Oh my God. And the guy said, we'll buy that for a dollar. And unfortunately, it was the most uncomfortable, horrific thing he's ever done, other than probably playing Robocop for a McDonald's commercial in Germany. But, um, <laughs> but uh, he, for that, he had to have a whole all over body cast. I mean, he's had that several times. Oh, wow. But the, the worst thing was they wanted him to come out of a pool of water in the middle of the night. This is horrible pond. For extra, and, you mean? An yeah. extra, yeah, and um, he was down there. And he, yeah, he was oh, in a cave and shit, like freezing cold. And, <laughs> and he, it was horrible. And but then the water was coming in through his eye holes and all this oh, sort of stuff. God. I hope he I'm made, not. He made a great monster. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 
he was very scary. It was, it was, you know, it was one of the first what they called video uh, now back in the day. It's definitely a memorable film because of that monster design. You know, it's not a great film, but it's a cool, weird monster. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I mean, it, it was a very strange film. I think we, we watched it again because we had this big, I did the launch of my book, Venus Complex. This was quite a while ago. And they showed Extro and they, you know, it was shock again. And they even made know, a sequel. I think there's Extro too. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, think- yeah, there was. It's not very good. No, there's a story <laughs> about a kid as well. And it, it gets really weird. Uh, but- Interesting little film trivia, of course. Um, the gal who's in, in the film went on to do um, a Bond movie with Timothy Dalton. Back to Bond. Marion Dabo, right? Yeah. Marion Dabo, right. Yeah. Mike's, Mike Dabo's daughter. Um, right. So he, he was actually um, did a few, my partner did a few performances with him actually because he would come on you know just with backing tracks and sing i just like so um terrifying it must have been but anyway so that's and and, little- and and tim dry was also one of the mon calamari in star wars yeah oh, really yes oh, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> he also in, played- in return of the jedi i think right uh, yes he also played yeah, with yeah. it as well yeah. yeah didn't he play two parts in the movies he did too whip it and mon calamari officer oh Wait, who's Whippet? Is he an Ewok? I we, no, oh, no, he's the opposite. He's this massive creature, fuzzy creature. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but he was in the, um, oh, Jabba the Hutt's palace, you mm-hmm. know, when they're all sort of hanging out, doing stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Lounging somewhere, being mean. Yeah. Joe, you got a nice pumpkin uh, on your background. I, uh, I was just vi- thinking about that. For vice mares? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's uh, gonna be weird. Rabbit ears. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about your project? Vice Mares. Is it Halloween? Yeah, yes. it's uh, gonna be my first feature film, and it's uh, about a man who's hiding from his problems, and he goes on a bender, kidnapping the pizza guy, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he gets attacked uh, by all his uh, all his uh, demons, essentially uh, through bad trip sequences, and. Um, we have these things that we're calling uh, Sockos, and uh, we we put them on our Indiegogo, and they flew. And everyone, they people snagged those up fast. So as yeah, soon as there was tested, one called Pepto, right? Which was Pepto Bismol colored. Yeah, <laughs> our, our uh, key artist uh, or key makeup artist Tori Yeager, she um, she's like a clown goblin. She uh, does she has great makeup just every day of her life. And she designed all these sockos, uh, and they're they're just they're sock puppets. They're they're like professional looking sock puppets that, you know, uh, are very inspired by Jim Henson. Oh, there's that. And uh, um, but yeah, they are they're so cool, and uh, they're fun to work with. And this artwork is by Anthony Galatis out in Greece, and he just did a he just did the um, uh, the Hellraiser three making of Hellraiser three uh, cover art. Oh, that's right. Oh, and we should mention oh. that Danny Stewart's book, The Making of Hellraiser 3, is out now, uh, right? It's yeah. available to buy. I think yeah. so, yeah. He was also yeah. in Dark Diddies, wasn't he? He got to, yes. be, he got to be that uh, couple of roles. In the office. Yeah, he's he's the 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 gimp, right? Yeah. And <laughs> no, that was that was weird. I mean, it was wonderful filming in this beautiful, huge mansion that this family have bought and they're slowly slowly trying to fix it up but it's massive what do they call that is, that's not an abbey or anything is it or... uh yeah i think it me... is an abbey right yeah yes, i think I... it is uh rem something abbey i forgot yeah, it's not a um no what <laughs> anyway um... lori is is uh, screaming at the at the screen as she watches this oh right. uh, magnificent they're filming they they use it for virtually every one of the episodes um because it's so massive they can do all these different locations in one building yeah Yeah, i think it's called like remsby abbey or something like that i'm probably uh murdering the name of it but uh yeah you're correct yeah by the way i don't know if you guys got that little reference to bram stoker's dracula because Keanu Reeves does a brilliant English accent 
Abby normal. Um, <laughs> can I can I yeah. ask who has seen the new Hellraiser? I mean the new uh, Candyman. Oh, I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Yep. Are yep. No, yeah. I haven't seen it yet. No, I yep. love I love I I love the first one, Tony. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, I've seen the new one like ten times already. Really? <laughs> Is it on any of the channels? We were uh, going to talk about urban legends, it's, and ghost stories, and stuff too. It's available for streaming. I think uh, thanks to the it deal that not. they made with Universal, I think they. They put it in the theaters for 17 days. And then after that, they put it on the streaming platforms. So you can watch it on a lot of different places like YouTube. And, uh, um, and, and it'll be on Blu-ray in a few days. It's yeah. just like next week, I think it will be. Yeah. So I would probably buy the Blu-ray because renting it at the time was like $29? 20 yeah. $20? 1999? It was like, wow, yeah. just for renting. Well, I uh, actually, I rented because I was so desperate to see it. Sure, sure. I mean, you guys are all, you know, probably hated it. Wow. Oh, right. really? Now, this is something else. This is something okay. else. Because I, I, I'm getting ready to hate. As a child, I thought Wonder Woman was fabulous. I think Gal Gadot is fabulous. And so I really wanted to see the second Wonder Woman. And oh. I know it's got bad reviews, but I, I enjoyed it. And we, I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. And when you think how much it would cost to go to the cinema, it's not just the ticket the, you know the curzon you can you know when we went to see specter we got bought a couple of martinis you know yeah, yeah. I, I've, heard, I've heard a lot of people saying how horrible that movie was but then so then when i watched it i was prepared but but then but then i thought i don't get it you know i mean this is it's not like the best movie i've ever seen but i thought it was pretty fun i don't know yeah wonder is woman 1984 yeah yeah. Right. 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 You know, I I just think she's wonderful, and I'm I'm, you know. Uh, I like that I, golden armor that she had. Oh well, when the the trailer for the first one came, you know, I I have a partner who loathes um, uh, superhero movies, except for Iron Man and Batman because they make their own superhero nests. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Same and I person. Said, yeah, you know, I really want to watch this. And we're looking at the trailer and I start to cry. <laughs> this is so cute because it's a little baby Wonder Woman. She's looking at the sword and the older lady goes, that's not for you. And she goes, yes, it is. I mean, yeah. she was looking at the sword like I would look at handbags, you know, and it was just, <laughs> I thought it was so cute that I thought, oh, got to watch it. And he actually really liked it, you know, but um but did you say you saw Candyman or not? No. No. Me? Not no, I haven't yeah. seen it yet. No. Eventually. Yeah. That's I, pretty I, good. I, I, I do recommend it. Yeah. It, it's a weird thing because now, what's the thing is talking about remaking something? I mean, I know they're, they're doing a kind of different reimagining of Hellbound Heart for the oh. new Hellbound movie. Okay. Um, yeah. That I understand. And, and, as far as I'm concerned, because Clive is is producing it and he's mm -hmm. behind it, that means it probably will be great. Um, and I'm willing to give it a go. But it is that the the whole making the remakes. I mean, why, as you were saying, why remake the monsters? <laughs> I, I'm with you on that one. Really had a, a movie. Yeah. Now I know. <laughs> Rob Zombie is, is, I haven't actually is seen a movie. Is Rob Zombie making a movie? I heard it's a rated R. It's a rated R Munsters movie, and I'm going to see it, and I'm probably going to like it, but I'm pretty bummed that I can't take my, my eight-year-old kid to it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, we no, can watch Adam's well, Family all day, and that's cool, and, you know, Gomez and Morticia are horny as fuck. <laughs> what do you guys think? I love this. What do you guys think? They're are, romantic. What do you guys I think of the best the Halloween Adam's movie for kids? I love the Adams Family movies. I thought they were brilliant because Raul Julia and yeah. Alka Houston were fantastic. You know, I, I don't actually mind remakes and stuff like that. It's just that it we live in a very risk adverse culture. Of yeah. course, we have done in the music industry and in in the movies. And, and stuff you mean like by that that they take a risk when they put a big budget out? Is that what you mean? Well, no, what I mean is that they're they're it's harder to yeah, sell yeah, yeah. totally original stories than getting together a sequel of a very successful franchise. I mean, it's it's about money and it's a no brainer. I understand that. But it would be nice to see people putting money into original things. Although 
of course, yeah. actually, the people who are doing that now are, are Netflix. When you see the wonderful things that have been coming out for Netflix. Yeah. Um, I was actually just talking to a friend uh, at work, um, to, to Brant, um, the, the, yesterday, about how there, there was talk about remaking Highlander, right? And, and I said, you know, I bet if they took if they took the Highlander story and it was brand new and brought it to studios, they would say, what the heck? No, we're not making that. But since it's a remake, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that was a successful franchise. You know, we'll we'll do that. I showed Catalina Highlander. She had never seen it. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've been on a major uh, cannon kick, you know, with the Go-Go Boys and all that. And uh, Highlander is if you watch it in its intended aspect ratio. It is a freaking sick movie. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's incredibly I love that well movie. shot. There's so much money pumped into it. That story was empty, in my opinion. And and Queen, they asked him to do one song, and Queen was like, no, we're going to do the whole soundtrack. <laughs> the soundtrack is no, I, so rad. Yeah. I saw it in the cinema, and it was absolutely magnificent. Well, I'm sure that, that he probably has seen this T-shirt that Doug wears. Have you seen the T-shirt that says, no more remakes, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we bought good that. Suffering. I, I bought that from his booth um, in one yeah. of the conventions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, but I would just like to sound one note on this. I, I've said this before on shows, maybe your show, and I apologize if I'm repeating it. And yeah, I mean, no remakes, please. It's a waste of good suffering. I just always <laughs> like to remind people that the Maltese Falcon is a yes. remake. I was yeah. just about. It's that. a fantastic movie. The, the, the thing, the fly. Version. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, you know, you're in other words, it's, it's the talent. It's execution that counts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because the first two Maltese Falcons, actually, one of them's okay. One of them's got Betty Davis in as, as the femme fatale. Yeah. I prefer the, the remake version. to Kate Fear. Say again? You do? The, the, the Kate Fear right. remake I, I like with Robert it. De Niro. Yeah. I don't yeah. prefer it. <laughs> I'm a good example. Robert Mitchum was <laughs> badass, man. <laughs> yeah, Mitchell was badass, but De Niro's yeah. badass too. That's right. So you know, yeah. remakes can be good. So, and well, sometimes they, they and totally Godfather eclipse. Two is the counter argument to the don't make sequels one. Right. <laughs> for remakes. And Godfather Two. Had this conversation. Hellbound. I said, uh, well, no, sequel. Hellbound is a brilliant sequel. It's not a remake. It's a brilliant. Right. Sequel. No, no, but I'm saying Godfather Two proves. That a sequel can be great. Yes. 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 Can prove that a remake. Can Aliens. Be great. So many people. I'll get off my soapbox now. Hellbound. No, I love this conversation because I like talking about movies and I like talking yeah. about what you like and what I like and what everybody else likes and stuff. Ed, yes. I need to say this, okay? I've had more people come up to me and say how much they they love Hellbound, the best of all the f the films. Yeah. That's nice. Because it, it gives more. Um, um, sorry for shouting. Because of you, Barbie. <laughs> it's more. It, it it gets more into the backgrounds of the Cenobites, which everybody was thrilled about. They, they say Hellbound is my favorite, you know, and I think that's really great. It's been you, you get to see the world that they're from. Exactly. It's also been say, best Hellbound world. is my favorite because you're my oh, favorite. And I haven't. Ed, finished. hang on. <laughs> uh, and it's actually been voted. The, one of the best sequels, horror sequels ever, you know? So there you go. You're absolutely right. Because unfortunately, you know, I mean, I love the Maltese Falcon, but as you said, also, you know, for me, the original Cape Fear is, is the best one. I think it was far, really over the top. And uh, the-, the um, Yeah, I, I agree. Better, I think uh, when the original came out, no one had, on road. other than movies like <laughs> Peeping Tom, no one had really saw that kind of uh, disturbing behavior in, in the film. film right. you know, the, the, the egg scene where he cracks the egg on Polly Bergen's chest. He didn't tell her he was going to do that. Oh, <laughs> so the reaction is like <laughs> genuine. Yeah. I love that. Reaction. Time's up. Uh -oh. Yeah. No. I love stories like that about films, you know, filmmaking, like when you hear stories about like what, you know, Walter Houston did and, you know, <laughs> and people like that, you know. I think talk. that that actually talking about scary films, Cape Fear was very scary, but there's this wonderful moment. And, and if you guys love Robert Mitchum, he wrote, um, there's a book about him, a biography called Baby, I Don't Care, um, <laughs> which is perfect 
for his attitude, but he actually felt that he was the hero of the film. Right? <laughs> Some of the think that. <laughs> that's Haiti. That's his name. And he, there's this scene where he's, they're, they're fight, he and um, Gregory Peck, who was producing the film, fighting in the water. And this bit where he's supposed to put his, Gregory Peck's head underwater. And Gregory Peck's going, okay, time to let me up now. <laughs> no, I'll stay down there a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, can you please let me up? He went, my God, he's going to kill me. And of course, the reaction. I sign your check. <laughs> <laughs> right. One must suffer for our, uh, one's art. <laughs> well, Mitchum, Mitchum epitomizes cool, obviously. Um, yes. And I, I think Baby I Don't Care is a line from Out of the Past, a movie filled with incredible dialogue. Yeah. Um, yeah. By an uncredited screenwriter, by the way, a guy called Frank Fenton. Oh. Um, all yeah. those good lines are not in the novel and they're not in the credited screenwriter's screenplay. Mm. But Frank Fenton did a dialogue polish and my God, I mean, every other line in that movie is quotable. Uh, and Mitchum is fantastic in it. Yeah, and yeah. the other great thing about Mitchum is uh, he was bust on marijuana charges back in the <laughs> 50s. And because he was a celebrity, they, would, they, would, they said, we won't put you in jail if you rat out your guys. Smoking and the reefer. You and did jail time. So yeah. you got you to gotta love Mitchum. And yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah. Thought, you know, his record was um, corrected afterwards because they, they found out that it was actually a sting operation. Right. And, they planted uh, it on him. He, he didn't have it against him. But um, there's another Mitchum story. I, I just adore him. I've seen so many of his films. But, you know, in um, why can I never remember the title of this film? Love. Uh, oh, uh, Night of the Hunter. Night oh, of the yeah, Hunter. Right. He, he plays an amazing it. villain. And he was talking to Charles Lawton about how he wanted to do the character. And he said, I think we should have the tattoo, love, hate. And then they're fighting each other. And he was throwing himself the room and breaking furniture and stuff. And Lawton was going, wow. Yeah, yeah. Like, what did I say? He's rather taken with the part, isn't he? Quasimodo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what movies are you guys watching around this Halloween? I know Barbie, you posted something about watching uh, Night of the Demon. Uh, oh, wow. I love that movie. We had yeah. such a great evening. The Nia Quigley's in that. It's a good one. Right? No, no, no. That's that's not the right one. Love. Oh. This is <laughs> fifty four. Oh, the one with the big demon on the railroad tracks at the end, the black and yeah. white film. Yep, yeah. Oh, and, the Curse uh, of the Demon. Curse of the Demon. You yeah, said Night of the Demon. Well, no, it, it's well, also called that. Yeah. Night of the Demon was the, the British version. Curse of the did they change it Curse of the Demon in the U, United States. My friend Randy Bowen sculpted a nice little bust of that in resin. Uh, well, oh, it's the a, monster. It's got Peggy Cummins, who's also in uh, Gun Crazy, and uh, wonderful British actress, and um, Dana Andrews, who's most famous for Laura. And stuff like that, and it's it's a Niall McGuinness. Is Dana Andrews and Creature from the Black Lagoon? No, 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 no. That's the guy who played the governor in the old version of Hawaii Five O. That's uh, somebody <laughs> Dennings, I think, Bruce Dennings. <laughs> I can't believe. It. No, I can't um, get it either, but you're right. Anyway, so no, that it was a, it's a fabulous movie, and, and people always say they shouldn't have shown the demon. You know, the Jacques Tunier. Oh, I love the demon at the end. I think that's a cool model. I think he's great. And I love his tongue action. Yeah, I love like, the big <laughs> close up head of him, the big horns. And now I want to see that. Sure, yeah. sure. Oh, it's a great, it's a wonderful film. It's beautifully shot. I mean, this is the director who did Cat People, um, a ton of other great, Speaking you know, of writers. And, and out of the past, funnily enough, just to close that circle. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. That's right. Because I was looking up last night. Thinking, and what Cat is... People is also Malcolm has McDowell. a great remake with Natasha Kinski. Oh, it and was... Bowie. Bowie and, was... that's right. and Malcolm McDowell, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Malcolm and McDowell, right. <sighs> William Hurt. Pete, right. you knew oh. Robert Block, right, Pete? I, I couldn't or... say. I, I knew we had friends in common, and I was lucky enough to meet him briefly a couple of times, but I didn't, I didn't get to know him. Oh, okay. I just had a question. Is uh, have you ever heard of his character, 
Lefty Thiep. Lefty Thiep? Sure. You have, okay. I think he's a cool, we just got a book from uh, John Stanley, the Creature Features host. Oh yeah, sure. Of all the Lefty Thiep stories and Nina's been reading a couple of them. Oh yeah. Of course, he also wrote a story called uh, Yours Truly, Jack the Ripper, didn't he? Yes. Oh yeah, no, I'm, Block is a titan, you know, a giant. Yeah. He, yeah. I'm psycho, obviously. I know everybody listening knows that. Um, yeah. I did have a lot of friends in common with him, Ed, and so, you know, I've heard a lot of Block stories, and um, he sounds like, you know, I, I met him like maybe five minutes, but he, he seems to have been a great guy. I, I don't know anybody that knew him that has a bad word to say about him. <laughs> cool. It's good. Anybody else got any movies they're going to watch around Halloween time? I Sorry, think... Can I just apologize to Joe? I didn't mean to, to diss your like. To diss your like? Um, <laughs> diss your, your liking for the I get your lingo. <laughs> Cat Cape Fear, because it was very effective, and De Niro was brilliant. It's oh, no, they're, they're both great. I love them both, but I, yeah. I mean, just... I grew up with the remake before I saw the original. So right. it's kind of yeah. like the remake to Dawn of the Dead. I love the movie, but I think Zack Snyder's a total hack. And the <laughs> only reason that movie's yeah. good is because James Gunn wrote the flick. Yeah. Um, sure. But, you know, I, I, I like the original Dawn of the Dead. They way, haven't seen these movies, Bobby. Than... They're reminding us that they're all so much younger than we I, are. Isn't it? <laughs> not that much. Not that much. Well, we didn't <laughs> see those movies. Check out the... this yeah. my hair that's supposed to be brown. Oh, <laughs> we never Very... saw the silent movies like you guys did. <laughs> I like Dirk Golem. I like Dirk Golem too. Dirk Golem's a good one. I don't know, man. Some of my favorite Asperatu. movies are silent, like uh, uh, Faust by Morna. Or right, what about right. uh, Metropolis? Are you guys familiar with Haxan, Witchcraft Through the Ages? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great one. Oh, the that monsters, crazy. The demons are so well done for that time period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they got so inventive with the with the cinematography on that. I mean, back. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They got uh, you, you're not. Oh, sorry. They they got so inventive with the cin cinematography. I mean, they were pioneering yeah, glass every matte shot. paintings, miniatures. I mean, mm. reverse photography. I mean, just amazing stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, I've yeah. watched. I mean, the the first few years of the talkies, people thought it was the death of cinema because suddenly the camera was locked down because the mics. Right, and the cameras had to be so huge. Exactly. So you, you'd had this unbelievably fluid camera work growing and evolving right through the 20s. And, um, and suddenly it stopped and it was all just master shot, close up, master shot, close up. And you know, then it loosened up again. But um, yeah, people who assume that um, silent movies are hand cranked <laughs> Custard pie fights, you know, it's it's crazy. There's or some unbelievable... whiplash on the rail railroad tracks, and <laughs> yeah, right. But a lot of the movies took took their stuff from the pioneers, from the silent movies. I remember when I was studying film in school, uh, the Battleship Potemkin. Remember yes. that one? And oh, remember yeah. the remember the, uh, the 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 prank going down the steps? Yeah, oh, yeah. They, they wound they up putting really... the Untouchables. They exactly they they reshot that scene for the Untouchables when they did that. Yeah, and who did that? Brian De Palma, mm. the Phantom of the Paradise. We Hang go on round up. and round. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Eric. Paradise is good. That was shot here in Dallas. <laughs> Although I, I did you see an interesting the remake theater, this right? morning. Excuse me. I, I said I did see an interesting remake this morning. Of an old movie it's called yeah i don't know if anyone's heard of this uh it's out now it's called dune <laughs> <laughs> i i, I, I just watched it last night and i've seen it twice now oh my god that is good is i don't um, know if we can can we call it a remake if they were just going off of the novel and maybe they actually, weren't paying much much attention to the yeah, to the old technically yeah the, the first movie was a novel crunched into a two-hour flick how this many one, people yeah. have written have read the novel how many of you read the novel I well, yeah, I'm raising my right. hand, and <laughs> I would classify what he's done as a prelude to the movie that's coming. He he, he took the time to really develop all the characters, give you the mm -hmm. backgrounds, and he set the stage for the jihad that's going to be coming in the next film. Yeah, yeah. can I ask you if you've seen the documentary, the Alejandro <laughs> Jodorowsky's Dune? Jodorowsky, that is yeah, fantastic. crazy, right? 
It was yeah. going to be Orson Welles would be Orson Welles is the emperor. Baron Hart. Something. Uh, uh, an HR teacher doing artwork. Oh no, it was going to it was going to be Dolly was the emperor. Dolly was the emperor. Orson oh, Welles yeah. would be yeah. the Baron the Baron. Hart Conan. Uh, his own son, the director, uh, Alejandro's son, would be Paul. And wow. it would just be amazing. I saw that Jodorowsky's Dune uh, documentary. It's so good. And yeah, he had awesome. people like... I lost my sight. Thank goodness. I did see that. Yeah. And... and I need to, to say one thing. If you guys have never seen Sante Sangre, which is also... I awesome. have. I have. That was amazing. That That's actually a perfect sort of Halloween-y film because it's got that kind of... Um, Day of the Dead feel to it. Blood. Oh, yeah. Joe's got it right there on VHS. Yeah. On VHS. Oh, it's, it's such <laughs> an amazing film, beautiful to look at. And it's so strange because a friend of mine, Ann Bilson, is a film critic, and she said, Is there anything sadder than the elephant's the elephant's funeral? In uh, <laughs> Simon Boswell. Simon Boswell, who did the score for Lord of Illusions, did the yeah. score for Santa Sangre. Catalina oh. did an interview with him. Uh, guy, while he was in, he lives in France, so that was like two in the morning for us. Six degrees. Wow. Kevin so, Bacon. But yeah, he's a great guy. <laughs> awesome. But there's a wonderful story that that um, Yodorowsky tells about it, in that um, he was actually in a bar and he was talking to this guy, and he said, "Oh, I've just gotten out of prison." He said, "What? What? Wow! What did you do?" He said, "I was, I." I was a serial killer. I've been in prison for years and years. He went, really? And he basically got the story from this geezer in a bar. And um, somebody said, listen, do you, you have a lot of issues with women? Because blah, blah, blah. He said, after Santa Sangre, I no longer have any issues with women, you know, because <laughs> it's a very strange film. Um, but, but the relationship between him and his mother. I um, thought he was on LSD when he shot that. <laughs> borderline psycho he, he's no, just yeah. not afraid to just Let, i had i had a dream i smelled color so i wanted to film it and he just chased this dream he was amazing have you seen yeah. his, many of his other films like fondo at least and well i mean when he made Holy mountain. mountain he was continuously tripping balls on shrooms and the crew got in a <laughs> fight with him because he kept him he kept requesting all these impossible shots and the dp and he didn't understand that the DP was like, dude, you don't have any kind of setup for anything like this. And he would just <laughs> keep demanding and demanding and changing his ending. And then finally, when they did the ending, everyone was pissed at Alejandro Jodorowsky to the point where he says that they ran, he, ran, he ran away. He ran up to uh, <laughs> New York just to hide from people. And he got, he got offered, um, oh, I don't remember. He got offered some crazy gig. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember what the movie is. Catalina knows she should be telling this story but uh he, he just wouldn't take anything for a minute because he was hiding from uh people who invested in holy mountain wow. <laughs> that makes sense that makes a lot of sense I I yeah. he, i've seen all those films and they're totally bizarre and then of course the documentary on dune just goes to show you that if he had done that and he had been on acid and everything who knows what that would have been like a four hour dune you know and but, and you know just to close on that dune thing uh he had artists like Mobius or yeah. Jean Giraud uh, and, his real name. and H.R. Giger do art for that stuff. And they made this Piano huge book. It's going to be working on the effects and stuff. Thick book with all the drawings the and concept yeah. art and stuff yeah. that they were sent to producers. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know, because Dune wasn't made and everybody else came together, Aliens was produced shortly after, or Alien was produced right. shortly after because that. Because of Dan O'Bannon having worked on Dune. Mm. Oh God! You know that's the film I still find difficult to watch. The Alien? first day. Really? Um, oh yeah, it's 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 well sort of tied up with a lot of sort of issues I have. But um, uh, when yes. I first saw it, it was it was you know when when that thing went on to John Hurt. Oh, I actually Chesterster, the famous Chesterster. Yeah, yeah well, no, the face it, 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 the egg and went onto his face. I actually shut my eyes every time that scene came. I couldn't watch it. And then I finally made, managed to keep my eyes open on about the fourth viewing of it. But it was the scene when it came out and they were hunting for this little squidgy thing. Yeah. When the alien grew up into like a huge thing, not a problem for me. Hmm. I, it was a monster I could understand, but that little squidgy thing that had been inside of him, you. It runs away. <laughs> Skitters away across the floor. It's like and a then, spider and a crab. And then and... Barf says, check, please. 
Right. <laughs> but that's that's another good oh. example where the sequel is at least as popular. Yeah, as the yeah. second one. Very yeah. good. Very good. Empire Strikes, Strikes Back. Which which proves. Yeah. Darby. Um, you said earlier people were very nice to to say. Hellbound. Some people prefer, like yeah, Hellbound's their favorite. Clearly, I now realize the secret of it's Bill Hope. Because Bill Hope is in the <laughs> film, you gotta <laughs> have him again. So if you cast Bill in your sequel, yeah, you're right. You will, you will. Oh, well, and, yeah, well, and he has well. to get, and he has to get killed off. Right. Yeah. I think right. it actually is a matter of <laughs> dumb way in a dumb way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Throw him in the volcano. <laughs> Hang on, let Barbie talk. Go ahead, Barbie. That most film. If I've started, I won't stop. Um, that most sequels make more money than the original film. Isn't that true, Pete? Um, yeah, the first sequel, I, I don't know, you know, 50%. I don't know what the, the stats are, but low. yes, very often a first Hang sequel on, will, will uh, surpass the box office of the original. Yeah. But as the next one usually doesn't. Yeah. Oh, the third the third Marvel have been proving the reverse of this yeah. um, but that there used to be the received wisdom that it's all i mean i'm just saying financially not creatively but the mm -hmm. the the suits would always think it's always smart to make a sequel to a hit yeah um, it's not necessarily smart to make a sequel to the sequel of a hit yeah, yeah. Ten... because my favorite one of my favorite sequels is uh, mad max the second Mad Max film. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. just Mad Road Max. Warrior. The Road, Road Warrior. Warrior. Road Warrior. Yeah. No, wait. Um, yeah. Is Road Warrior the first one or Mad no, Max? The Road, Road Warrior is second. Mad two. Max is first. Oh. Right. I always yeah. got him. And, and Thunderdome is, is, Thunder is the third one, and that kind of proves Pete's point. That was a terrible, <laughs> terrible movie. Yeah. I don't I think like, you watched Thunderdome like or the story. But a great <laughs> Tina Turner song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All we want is life beyond the Thunderdome. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I got a so, question. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Are we going to do some scary stories? Yeah. 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 That's what I was trying to move. Uh, oh, okay. Into. I'm sorry. Yeah. In fact, Pete, <laughs> what's your Halloween experiences and from your past? And what about in LA? Do you go to Halloween parties in LA and stuff? Who's he talking? Oh, oh, are you talking to me? Oh. Pete. Ed, who are you talking to? Pete, 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 Pete. Oh, okay. Because we were going to ask him about Halloween in England. Okay, let's do let's do Tyler. Pete, then Eric, then Barbie, and and then everybody else. Okay, um, my, mine will be very short. Um, no, I don't really go to Halloween parties in LA. Um, growing up in England, just to go back to what we were saying two hours ago. Um, Halloween did exist. It, it wasn't really a public thing. You'd always have Halloween parties. Um, family, you know, kids would have Halloween parties at home. Like Ag Agatha Christie wrote a book called Halloween Party in 1960. So it was it was a well-established thing. What we didn't have in the UK was trick-or-treating or house decoration. I was surprised when Barbie spoke about the fa fabulous house she saw decorated because you might get somebody hanging a string of pumpkins in a window but this is back in the 60s and 70s um but there were there were two types of things that happened there were little kids parties where you played games like bob apple and duck apple and maybe they'd make you look in a mirror with the lights out and strike it your dad would hold a candle under his chin and come through the door with a fright mask on <laughs> or there were teenage parties where by the 70s, we were dressing up in costume, which, like all teenage parties, was about can we get drunk, can we get laid? Wasn't, <laughs> um, can we be cool? Can we be cool? There wasn't the, the 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 big public celebration. I gather now, of course, that has happened. But um, I, as a kid, I loved Halloween because that was when I grew up in the dim and distant past of three channels on television. And uh, Halloween meant that you would get to see Night of the Demon, Bobby, or you'd get to see the Universal movies. You'd get or to see Hammer. the early Hammer. Hammer movies. They would celebrate it by putting all the shit I couldn't get to see 
on TV, on TV. So that was really what Halloween meant to me as a kid. It was an opportunity to see the movies I read about in famous Monsters of Filmland magazine, but couldn't see. So mm. I got to see them. And uh, then when I moved out here, I went to a couple of, um, you know, Hollywood parties, I guess, for Halloween. Um, but they're like all Hollywood parties. It's full of assholes trying to make people <laughs> other assholes. But they were in costume. So... Um, Can't tell who the And are. for whatever reason, I live in a neighborhood... Um, uh, which t tends to be either old professionals like me or young professionals. There are very few families with kids in our neighborhood. So we don't even get to hand candy out for the most part. We rarely have people knocking on the door. They just so I'm hand a judge. So, you know, to speak to everybody else. I, I am, I'm useless for Halloween stories. How about ghost stories or experiences and, Crazy. Well, that's what I thought we were going to do at the end. We, we can go. We can go to Eric now and then Barbie. Okay. Oh, you want some scary stories? Yeah. What do you got? Uh, <laughs> what do you got? What do I got? I, I tend to like always have background music. You mean and stuff? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean thing things you don't see, but there's always you know I'm never in an empty room kind of a situation, even when you don't see anything. Uh, I was living in Florida and this one, I moved into an apartment and day one, I just kind of like thought, this doesn't feel right. And this would be like where you'd make the bed, you go to work, you come home, the bed's not made, and, you know, so the, the dishes are on the counter and I called the apartment complex. Was somebody in my apartment? It was like, nobody's in your apartment. And that kind of thing. Altergeist. Kind of, yeah. Well, um, I won't go into a bunch of them, but there was one particular where uh, I had a cat and the cat. The, the litter box was in the bathroom. So I used to have like a little, uh, uh, one of those, uh, not like an incense burners, but you put a tea candle and then to be like essential oil. So it kind of like dissipate the smell from, one thing I can't stand about cats is the litter. It's the smell from the, so I put that in the bathroom, you know, and I lit it and I, and I sat down on the couch one day and I must've fallen asleep, you know, like, uh, like from the couch there. So you fall asleep, you slump down. I'm out and all of a sudden I hear right in my ear, very quietly, like, wake up. And I sat up and when I sat up, the entire apartment was full of smoke, but it was in a layer that where I was, it was right above me. So when I sat up, I sat up into the smoke because the, the oil had burned off and it was just spitting and it had gone onto the shower curtain. Oh no. And the shower curtain was going up. So I, you know, went into the bathroom and like, you know, luckily I was smart enough to go like, oh, pull it off the hooks and, you know, turn the shower off. But the entire apartment was full of smoke and I could have died. Reason. You could have yes. died. <laughs> but I had like wow. fun people watching out for me like that, constantly like, you know, looking out for me. But it was just I, the most remarkable about that was to hear, and I'm a dead sleeper, but to hear a voice very clearly in my ears just wake up. Wow. You know, but they couldn't be bothered to clean your cat box. No. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God. Or, or just blow out the candle. <laughs> fucking ghosts. Oh. We're tucking you in with a nice blankie. You know? Although they did, oh, they did let me know when they didn't like my mm. company. I remember one time I was taking something out of the oven and I heard, uh, I have one of those Pyrex, you know, the, those heat resistant things and I'm holding it up and I hear somebody in my other ear and it's like, I don't like her. And the thing just explodes in my hand into a thousand dollars. Uh, well. I'm like, time to get another apartment. <laughs> Whoa. Obviously, the tenants so. don't like the company I keep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barbie, do you have any? Do you have any uh, scary stories or uh, Halloween events that you've been to that uh, that you'd yeah. like to share? Well, I I haven't been to any Halloween events in a long time, sadly. But um, any like scary I, stuff you know, happened? Hang on, every is Halloween for me. I mean, when I was a kid, um, you know, my brother and, and father were totally into science fiction and um <clears throat> and so but my father uh, my brother loved the creature feature which happened every saturday afternoon pete we got to see horror movies and i i what was we're watching i was watching these things and wildly inappropriately too young to watch right. you know um <laughs> Certain films like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the original black and white 50s one. Those are the um, best ones. 
I really still can't watch that film. It freaks me out so much. Um, uh, the idea of your parents putting pods under your bed of your, the children. Oh, yeah. And when I was a kid, I used to look under the bed for pods <laughs> and in the closet for, for the boogeyman. So basically every day was Halloween as far as I was concerned. And another film that scared me a lot was Invaders from Mars, which again was shot. Oh, I love Invaders from Mars. From <laughs> the child's perspective, 1950s, black and William white. Cameron Menzies. Yes. And and the, the father gets slurped into the, you know, the... the uh, spaceship under the the, the ground the sand yeah the sand horror that the back of his neck has been drilled right oh so i remember that every time my father went down to read his science fiction books in the basement which we had a rather creepy basement with a locked room hello <laughs> that he had not access to and that was like what what's in this room you know but anyway he'd come up and i would be, I was tiny, but I still grabbed at the back of his shirt to check to see if he'd been drilled. <laughs> and I told him years later, and he said, That's what you were doing. <laughs> sure. But um, anyway, so all these things about, but as far as ghost stories are concerned, when I first moved to England, it was part of a, um, a university program, drama program. And they took us on this tour, which was very sweet of them. We went to Hampton Court and we're poodling around Hampton Court, beautiful palace. And we sort of going and I, I entered this rather grand hallway. And I swear, it's a, the temper just went like, pfft. I thought, whoa, that's so cold. Jesus, that's, this is, don't they have heating here in England? Actually, the answer is no. Uh. Um, <laughs> I get to the end of this corridor and I asked my teacher, I said, listen, what is it with that corridor? You could really feel this temperature drop. He said, oh, that's the haunted corridor. And really? Who's haunting it? And now get, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I can never remember. I think it was Catherine Howard. She was one of the beheaded. Mm -hmm. It was divorce, yeah. beheaded, died, divorce, beheaded, right. survived. King Henry um six right? yeah his wife oh, king henry the eighth and his sure. sixth wife and um she had they they came to arrest her and she ran away and she ran down this corridor and she's banging on the doors of the chapel and where henry was praying um <laughs> ironically you know be please don't chop my head off please please and they dragged her screaming down this corridor and ever since, it's been the haunted corridor. Wow, that would do it. Yeah, the, yeah. the psychic stain never left. Well, see, this is it. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure if I believe in that. <clears throat> thing, sure. but, yeah. but ghosts, you know, because it could be another dimension kind of thing, and that sometimes people are through go through such traumas that maybe, as you say, a psychic stain. Um, infects the place. I mean, my partner with his, his previous partner went to look at an apartment in um, uh, Maida Vale, London, and they walked in and they went, and they are not fanciful people at all. They just looked at each other and went, we can't be here. We, we've got to go. Bad vibes. A bad, bad feeling about it. That's called noped the fuck out yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. Joe, you got any uh, any scary stories or Halloween stories you'd like to share? Um, well, uh, from Texas. Yeah. So there's this place here in Texas called Mineral Wells. And uh, when I was younger, I used to, you know, my friends and I would do stupid shit. And this hotel is huge. It's grand. It's the, 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 classiness of it was on par with the titanic and it went out of business i want to say in the 1960s it uh got it uh they shut it down <clears throat> there was a lot of there was a lot of suicides there and murders and uh, you know celebrities and politicians would stay there all the time and there's nothing in mineral wells other than uh a spring of <laughs> water of fresh water and that's the only thing that's in this town it's you know, uh, I would say an hour west of Fort Worth of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. So my friends and I, 
would uh, at the time I was in a band. I, I used to be in a lot of rock and roll bands, and we would, you know, do we would pull our inspiration from things from like you know Pantera to Joy Division. It was all over the place. Susie and the Banshees mm -hmm. and Bauhaus and anything, anything that was metal or goth related, and we would just combine this stuff. So we would go to this hotel and just kind of poke around and it's completely illegal to get inside. And it was impossible. We had to jump fences. We abandoned? had to... abandoned place. Yeah, it was abandoned. And we, they were very vocal about how no one was allowed to go inside because you could die. Mm -hmm. So we go in from time to time when, you know, weird hours of the night, we'd go out of our way to drive out there <laughs> and, you know, we'd come back and then we'd start writing music, you know, and we were all night owls. So come 7 a.m. we're finally getting back to our rehearsal space and jamming out um and my, mind you i'm like 18 17 18 at the time um and uh so we checked it out we i, I one time we made it all the way to the lowest level possible and i found uh, uh like books of you know old guests and you know i'd flip through them and stuff uh there was floods everywhere we made it into uh they had the, the swimming pool was disgusting. There was a sauna, a bath. There was a bathhouse underneath with all these weird paintings of like this mural of like mermaid children, like fighting over treasure. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, and then sometimes we would go all the way to the very top where there was a giant ballroom with not, with, uh, with the walls made completely of windows that were not, that were entirely shattered and there was guano everywhere, but the view outside on that balcony was beautiful. And uh, you could see, you know, the night sky was just amazing out there. There's no light pollution. Um, a couple of times the cops would show up and, you know, try to run us out, but we wait them out because, um, like I said, we're stupid kids. <laughs> um, but there was one time we made it to the chapel, which I don't remember what floor the chapel was on. And, and uh, that was the coldest place in the whole hotel there I, I always felt like i was seeing something but you know it's Energy. dark and you know your eyes kind of start playing tricks on you even in the ballroom which in the ballroom the the columns the walls are all mirrored so if you go in there with a flashlight you're going to blind yourself Whoa. it and it it always sounded like there was the story is always said like if you go research it it says you think you hear music from the ballroom but you you really don't and these were things that I felt like I was experiencing before I did my research. Well, we made it up to the chapel. And mind you, this place is ancient, it hasn't really been functioning for 40 years, 50 years. And so our dumbasses go, let's steal a door. And uh, steal a door. We stole a door. So these doors were about 120 pounds. They were made oh. out of freaking oak wood. <laughs> they had, uh, they were beautiful. Uh, they had a uh, this section in the middle where one side would open and i guess you could place your hang your uh, dirty laundry or your suit and then you know on the outside of the door uh whoever uh, the chambermaids would come and they'd open up the, the the other side of the cabinet and they'd grab your your stuff and go do your dry cleaning so we took this door and uh we carried it all the way down uh the stairwell because there's no elevators, no electricity. And so it's it's freaking hot. There's three of us. We're struggling to get this really heavy door down nine flights of narrow stairs oh, out of this abandoned hotel. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, hopefully the cops don't see us. <laughs> not only do not that's not it though. Once we get down to the lobby, um, <laughs> we still have to figure out how to get it outside the courtyard wall. <laughs> Well, we get it outside the courtyard wall and there's three of us and we're, you know, we, we look stupid, you know, running across the street, holding a door in the middle of the night, throwing it in our friend's trunk and, truck and beelining it back to uh, Irving. So, and we get it in our studio and we're like, holy shit, we stole the dumbest thing possible. <laughs> um, and we wrote, we wrote an album. Uh, I want to say it took us probably three days to write one of the weirdest things ever um and it was it was like you know monster movie goth rock and uh, i think i have like two demos left but what happened was is that all the tapes that the demos were on when we came back to the studio the next day they were they were burnt oh wow and no one would fess up to it 
<laughs> so Spooky. My, my demos, my demos, <laughs> my demos were gone. And I, I keep everything. I have pretty much everything I've ever created um, as far as like, you know, being a musician or a writer. Yeah. Uh, copies and stuff. Except that. It, it so, was an EVP event. Well, was, shortly uh, after the door uh, went missing. See what yeah. he did there. Yeah. The, the, listen, just just a very quick story when i was in san antonio i stayed at the second most haunted hotel it was i was told in texas i can't san, remember the name of it san antonio is notorious ghost town yeah but there there's a whole in the 30s i mean this hotel was beautiful and old and stuff but in the 30s this woman checked in right and the next day the maid came in to clean it and the room was covered in blood no sign of the woman. Oh, and she was never found. But I couldn't control that. I, I froze to death in this hotel <laughs> because I couldn't get it up. But I just when I somebody told me that story, I went, "Oh my god!" You know, yeah. that's pretty weird. You know. Yeah. Then you never know. You woman. never know what happens in, in those rooms. Or in the room, there was a bunch of Joe Manco demos. Took <laughs> 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 my demos. <laughs> They were teleported. Back those up back in those days, probably. So yeah. I'm sorry to hear your demos. You will a place in the toilet. I'm, I'm pretty certain those songs weren't as good as now as I thought they were then. So yeah. Um, so uh, then I'm gonna go for like quick Ed and Nina story, then Ryan and me, and then we'll do a quick flash round of all the projects that we mentioned today. Um, before we we close the episode, Ed and Nina, I got some pictures that you guys sent me of stuff that uh, that you sculpted and and stuff that you made for uh, uh, Halloween horror haunts that I'm just going to share here real quick. Uh, okay, yeah. That's Nina, Nina can tell a story, a haunted story about a place. Yeah. Well, we we worked in a couple of haunted places. Well, you could show the pictures while we talk over it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there's the chatter dog. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so. Um, a couple of the places we worked at where um, there are alleged hauntings was the Meek Mansion, and that's right here, here in, in Hayward. Yeah. yeah, right, right near Hayward in uh, um, Northern California. And the Meek Mansion, um, I worked there on a part of a, a columbarium project for Day of the Dead. So it was exactly this time of year, and there was this spooky basement, um, and of course. A lot of us, we were working on it as artists and we were filling our respective spaces for a group show and we we're all paying tribute to various um, dead people. Loved ones. That, yeah, loved ones and such. And um, nothing happened when I was there, but they did get a visit from the uh, ghost hunters. So, TV show people. Yeah, so there is an episode. It's a haunted place. Yeah, it's it's like over a hundred years old. It's a beautiful yeah. mansion. It's, you know, from California, you know, over a hundred years ago, multi floors and basement and everything and the surrounding grounds and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But nobody stole my paintbrushes or anything. <laughs> it's very beautiful work. You guys' work is fantastic. Oh, thank you. I, I just need to tell you guys, I, I've got to go in about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Is, should I just quietly shuffle off when I do or should, <laughs> If you could fade out of view. <laughs> like a ghost. Yeah, we actually are almost done. Uh, so if you need to go, just, uh, yeah, let us know and we'll we'll say goodbye. But uh, Ryan, you have a quick story to share? I think you're muted. Muted? Unmute, sir. You're muted. You're a cat. <laughs> I can't hear you. You're not a cat. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, we go. So, so, yeah, th this was... Um, something that i used to do on halloween i had a, I have a friend named uh, robert schaefer and he and i used to go see movies sometimes on halloween and but this one time he had made a school project a video project about death and he built himself a coffin and he had he had um he had all these like grim reaper robes made oh wow and so for halloween we wore those robes and carried the coffin around a shopping mall and <laughs> trick-or-treated all of the stores Wow. And so they kept putting candy into the coffin. And by the time we got out of the mall, the coffin was completely full of candy and it weighed wow. like 200 pounds. Wow. And so I'm like, I don't know, what are we going to do with this thing? And he said, just chuck it in the dumpster. Are so we threw this, this, this coffin full with like 200 pounds of candy into the wow. dumpster. 
Wow. Why don't want to put it someplace? The great pumpkin is going to curse you for that. Yeah, we can I guess the, 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 we didn't have a lot of forethought on on that. Yeah. I guess. Have you guys heard of creepy pasta stories on YouTube? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of creepy pasta. Have you guys heard of the ones about you know forest rangers and how they discover staircases out in the middle of the forest that just yeah. are not connected to nothing? All different types, all different sizes from like 10 stairs to like 100 stairs and you know crazy stories about people who if you go up them you disappear and you know just all these wild stories of on creepy pasta and yeah. have you guys heard the the phrase i noped the fuck out of there right of course <laughs> <laughs> let me just a uh, quick quick uh, story for me it's not actually something that happened to me it happened to my great great grandfather so uh -huh. this is this takes place back in the 1800s so my grandfather was a goldsmith. He heard this from his father, who was a blacksmith. And then his father was, I think he was a fisherman. Um, so what happened was back in the day, uh, we lived in a fishing town. Okay, so it was a city by the Atlantic, uh, you know, uh, and there were different groups of fishing schools, each with their captain or their master, as they used to call it. And uh, they would compete with each other. And uh, people from my hometown were notorious for high sea rock fighting where they would throw rocks at each other oh, wow <laughs> to get them to get out of there because this is our fishing spot whatever like anyway thoughts and catapults <laughs> so one day it, it seems like uh there was a ghost that started haunting the area where the boats would sail out of and uh being very superstitious people at the time we're talking 1800s portuguese uh sailors who probably were illiterate um they were scared they saw like a, a figure with chains mm -hmm. and like a sheet by the boats and it would just lumber around and they'd be like oh we can't go fishing tonight there's a ghost i i this is a bad omen okay so my great great grandfather got uh wind of this they told him you know hey antonio we can't go fishing because there's a ghost and he's like there's a ghost okay well let me go there and check that ghost so one night they're getting ready to go fish they go to the 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 harbor and there's the ghost so it's like, ooh. And so my great, great, great grandfather was like, I'm oh, this ghost ass. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is a ghost, huh? Okay. He grabbed an oar and walked over to the ghost and started beating him up with the oar. And all of a sudden, the ghost miraculously started speaking, oh, wow, oh, don't hit me, Antonio. Don't hit me. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you can speak. Here's another one. Pam, bam. <laughs> and so what turned out was, of course, another school of fishermen was actually uh, trying to keep Poaching. that group of fishermen from going fishing at the same time they did. But uh, that story got away. Yeah. With it. So that's kids. the time my great great grandfather beat up a ghost. That's hey. a Scooby Doo, <laughs> Scooby -Doo <laughs> moment. Yes, yes. Scooby Doo. So, <laughs> and I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you. Yeah. Crazy, Husky, uh, right. crazy sailors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, quick flash round here for Barbie's project. You got uh, you're lightning writing round. the script with we'll Chris round. Alexander no. for Blue Eyes. Uh, still in in development. Help Blue Eyes. Um, keep an eye out for Dark Diddy's presents on Amazon Prime for the new Dad. It's a my I just fell in love with it from the script. It's actually. Um, and a, a zombie film with emotional depth and keep your eyes out for what was it called ah what, what the nine have? circles of hell yeah uh, yes very good the nine circles <laughs> of hell. um and circles, uh, dark and no, dark cities she said that circles oh. no uh dark ditties and well Hopefully, the blue, the eyes. blue eyes. Blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Stories about Dante's Inferno. This was uh, this was so much fun. And Pete, you still have one more project that we haven't really uh, talked about. I'll just quickly share the screen here. It well, seems that there's another um, there's <clears throat> another collection of stories that you're uh, preparing. Oh correct? yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic! All our hearts are ghosts. It's right oh, there. That's so cool. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> so you got this one coming hopefully sometime soon. And uh, you've yeah. got the um, bloodline script. Say one more time. Sorry, Joe. 
And then you also have the Bloodline script that's been released by Encyclopocalypse. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. And, um, you know, again, everybody's gallop was a little stopped by the pandemic. There will be a couple more audio books coming. Um, oh, um, I'm very interested in that because of my blindness. I love sure, audio Of course, Ed, yeah. And um, they'll, hopefully within the next few months, we'll have Moon Town, Big Thunder and Rumors out on audio book. Oh, but, yeah, great, great. But I would prefer to use my time to say, Ryan, a coffin full of candy is a <laughs> yes. great fucking title. So yeah. you have to, you have to use oh, that. Yeah. You've got to. Uh, oh my gosh! Agree. That'll be the yeah, next coffin full of candy. Come on, everybody would read that. The next <laughs> yeah. Kickstarter like title that. will be a coffin full of candy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And here's another event that's going to happen for all you uh, Rolling Darkness review fans out there. It's coming up a Halloween special. Oh, uh, well, no, that's, that's actually already happened. That's, oh. um, <laughs> it's, it's very kind of you to promote another podcast on your podcast. That was um, uh, two horror writer friends of mine, Tamara Thorne and Alistair Cross have, well, they used to have a show called Haunted Nights Live. And mm -hmm. now they have a new show with new management, I guess, called Carnival Macabre. And uh, every year they have me and Glenn back Mm -hmm. not to do the role in darkness review because obviously that was a theater show but as the ghosts of the role in dark would come on and tell stories and stuff but that's already happened that's uh if you go you find me on social media and you'll find endless links to to all sure this. they can let's, still let's listen to it from, let's hear from the other people yeah and pete by the way i was able to finally listen to that thanks to nina she got it onto an mp3 and i was able to put it into my uh audio device so i did oh cool that. great the, the yes the thing i read for for oh good i'm glad yes. that's with you and glenn and the uh the other people who did the podcast sure, sure. very yeah. enjoyable yeah um and finally eric you got some um you got some uh, oh, some plans in the yeah. future for yeah, the Pandorix, on. right? Oh, hold on a second. Actually, I don't think I even showed you this one, though. Yes, no. this is the second book. Oh, the Toy Maker. Right. Nice. nice. That's the second one. Yes, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, again, shut down printers. They want to do laser printing. I'm like, it needs to be offset printing because, you know, I don't want these things fading. But yes, I'm actually uh, talking to uh, a binder in Edison to see if we can can't get this into gear. Things are finally starting to open up again. Yeah, so I've got excellent. that, and I've got a bunch of these things in the works. So stuff coming. So, yeah, right? keep us yes. posted. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and, and the yeah. Indiegogo for Vice Mayors is still up. Uh, you guys have 28 days left. So I'm just going to, we'll put this one in the show notes as well. And yeah. I, I want to just thank everybody for joining us for this Halloween celebration. Thank You've made you it so guys. special. Yes, thank you. Yes, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. When are happy, you going out tomorrow night? Happy Halloween to all you guys. And it's been an utter light chatting. And I'm, I'm sorry if I got a bit noisy. Did I get noisy? No, you were no. delightful. No, no, no. Thank you, Barbie. Thank you. Love you, Barbie. <laughs> yeah. You're our favorite <laughs> female Cenobite. <laughs> hey there's only two <laughs> <laughs> but you're our favorite <laughs> thank you so. oh gosh well listen you guys take care of yourselves okay keep safe everybody you're true sure. you too. Yeah. let's hope 2022 right. is going to be halloween say, yeah. say hi to everybody's other halves cheers yes. happy Wonderful. halloween cheers. everyone yeah. this was so really much. fun everybody thank you so much yeah. As, as 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 Jose was about to say, you know, may may twenty twenty two be whole, last. Be wonderful, whole. And good, may it suck less. <laughs> a creative year full of yeah. projects for yeah. Jose. Ryan yeah. and Joe have stories, projects. little Halloween bonus stories up on the cast. You should. Uh... We do. You've read a segment from Moon Town. Yeah, uh, Ryan did a Nightbreed yes, story. Guys, I yeah. did a Nightbreed story. So go Thank check you. that out. Thank you so much, Pete, for reading yeah. that story for us. That was fantastic. I was trying to plug them, not me, but God bless you, Ed. Thank no, you. That, 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 awesome. that, that excerpt was such a tease. I made me go out and buy the book. I, I yeah. bought it from uh, from Earthling. Oh, oh I'm muted. I'm muted. He's still no, got copies. It's like 
11 years old and he can't sell that tiny print run out. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> in the, uh, well, that's going to come out as an audio book, though, right? Uh, yes, hopefully within the next few months. Ed, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Are, are you reading that one, Pete? Um, that one, probably not. Okay. Um, but but it might be nice who we who we. Have I can hardly read. wait to hear the adventures of Scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.